Mark will you only work? Hi, no, no. Right, I'll be back in a Stop. I'm not watching that. You getting a little idea of how not well this is going? I don't even know if you're seeing this. This is what YouTube does to you. I could just be talking to myself. Don't know if it's live, but I think I played the wrong one. So let's try this one. Slightly subdued uh, entry there. I am whacked, man. I am absolutely, dare I say, suffering. I emailed Packer's missus twice. I think he goes out on the lash on a Wednesday, doesn't he? If you're here, Packer, and you want to come in, just let me know. Like, you know. Let's get some LOs out of the way while the OGs are in, because before long, you know what it's like here. We'll have 20,000 people and no one will know who anyone is. Right, let me charge my phone up. What I do is use my iPhone 5 or whatever it is to listen to audio books or, or, or anything, anything that goes on for a long while, like if I'm full of dropping off to sleep or something, or anything, if I'm working, I just want something rattling on in the background. Um, and then I don't, yeah, I'm not even going to finish that. This, this is why it's a call in. I, <laughs> I'm going to need some assistance somewhere along the linear. Here we go. Anyway, Pags is in. Pags votes for a VAR. I can't do it. I don't know how to do it. It's like, do you remember my old real house? I saw someone else living in my real house the other day. It used to be like... It used to show up on there, didn't it? My old house. But I don't know how you meant to do it anymore, so apologianos. I can't believe the boy Fused has got the grift going. He's dropped a lady Godiva. He's had nothing to say, but he said so much of that. The grift is on, people. Up the top is uh, entropy at the top of the chat. Preferred My preferred method. But I'll take it anywhere. You can you can put it on a hot poker and stick it up the jacksy if you want. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you, John. Super chats like Mr. Fuse, dear. Bottom of the chat. So there you go. Um, I'll put my rings on and I'll get back to me LOs just quickly. Although now the numbers have moved up a bit. Um, thank you. Actually, I'm going to leave that on the screen, John, to... Um, as an example. Anyway, where was I? He's here. Don't fancy it, Packer. Packer, let me know if you fancy it. If you don't, it's really no issue at all. I'm begging you. <laughs> no, of course, it's not a hassle. If sometimes you just want to sit back and watch it, of course, that's up to you. Hello, JP. JP's on the flirm. <laughs> I don't know what I said, flirm. Our oh, pizzle, he's here. Enoch Powell's dropped a star in. Oh, yeah, I'll tell you what. At the end of the last stream, I think it was, it was like a, we'd done a, like a, a, a scrubism attack of like 
old school scrubisms. It was amazing. Some of them, some of the ones that came out, I had forgotten. It was really good. Um, so there's a lot of prizes are going to be given out today, you know, emotional prizes, words. <laughs> no, I might mention it if I see it. That's what I'm saying. Blogs is here. Hello, Blogs. How are you, man? Oh, well, he's already started. Look, he's scared. My pessimists, my pessimistic predictions keep coming true. Nostradam blogs, they call him. Nostradam blogs. There you go. Nice to see you, Bloggle. I'm going to go to the end of the comments to see what um, Packer says. Oh, that's a fucking absolute treat. Packer, I'll put the invite in the chat. And then I'll get rid of it because it's uh, it's a problem for trolls that we don't get. Hello, Andy. Good to see you, Eleanor. Hello, Eleanor. Always a pleasure. Toffee's here asking uh, JP about uh, the gentleman. You know what I thought about the gentleman, and I'm going to make a video on this. I'm going to make a video about production values. Because what are production values? Production values are a con. Production values is the culture industry industry that that are the culture industry's way of making you accept messaging um, without realizing it. But well, I might get into a bit of that on here later, actually. But um, uh, we're having a call. In. Packer, I thought you went down the boozer on a Wednesday. Have you already been? No, I normally do. I'm not today because I'm knackered. You're very loud. Am I? Sorry. That's better. That's all right. I didn't know if it, I didn't know if you knew or not. You were sort of almost peaking. <laughs> that, isn't it weird? Because I've got a mate I spoke to today, mm. and he said, I am absolutely shattered. He like, you know, he, he, every day he says I'm knackered. So do I. Because I am, and so is he. But after the stream Friday, I think it was, we done one. After that, I started writing. And I didn't stop until about 7 o'clock Saturday morning. Got about five hours kip. Because my girlfriend's busy moving her family and decorating the new house and getting it all done up how they want it. And before anyone, anyone says, why ain't you there doing that? Well, A, I'm earning money to pay for it. And B, when I've tried, they don't want that. I don't know anything about how the Cambodians do things. <laughs> anything I suggest, they all just look at me as if. Um, as if it's I Q8 it. vlogs here. I couldn't, but I just saw that, Packer. I just saw that. She's not a spam lady. She's changed her name. What? You're not. You, well, you are not spam lady, and you, yet. And there I was just talking about old scrubisms. Don't take that the wrong way, uh, not spam lady. But what was her real name? Cecil Panga Hanga Hanga Nangan, wasn't it? Something along those lines, yeah. Hello, Cecil Panga Hanga 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 Hanga. Yeah, nice. You can cow. You can cow. <laughs> uh, Pizzle says that JP loves me a bag of Erin. Well, that's some kind of weird Freudian slip. But, um, okay, Wolfie's here, look. Lan. What have I missed there, Packer? I've no idea. Ian? No. It's Ian. Oh, there, there you go. It's not an L, is it? Isn't that a weird one? In I, I, I run into that trouble all the time, especially with passwords. If it's got a 1 or an L, and it's a 0 and an O problem as well. Very, very interesting uh, content we've got going on here. Who else is in? So Marzi Pan's in. Hello, mate. MCJD's in. Absolutely lovely. I know, man. It's amazing, isn't it? Wolf is in, obviously. We just said hello. It's not spam ladies in. She won't hang around, though. <laughs> See, look, MCJ Dub still pops in. Cecil shouted us all out. Absolutely lovely. What an amazing thing. To do. <laughs> oh, that's why she said it, because Ian uh, j'accused her. He was straight in. Oi, no spam lady. What did you say? I'm not spam lady. It's incredible. 
The thing is, Cecil, we know you're not spam lady, but because of that, we call you the I'm not spam lady lady. Or Cecil Panga Handa Ganda Hangda Nandan. Anyway, hope your YouTube stream uh, channel's going well. It's it's hard work, isn't it? Isn't it hard work? I've got an ex-girlfriend's son who's doing it. This 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 could be quite relevant to you, Packer. And she said to me, Do you pay moderators? I was like, No, I've never heard of that. I said, if you've got a channel maybe with like who gets like five thousand people live and you've got there's a concerted organized effort to damage your streams, you might. I said, but it is a community thing. People offer blah 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 blah. And I think her son's being ad, you know. I think he's got his little YouTube channel and his mates have said, Right, we'll moderate it for like you know what kids are like, it's only like fifteen or fourteen or something. You give us ten or a week, and he's like, Yeah, but I'm not even monetized. And they're like, Yeah, but you well help you get there. <laughs> Imagine that gig. Just sitting there <laughs> with the, the moderators are the only audience. Absolutely bizarre. Nice to be able to help my first love, though. Oh, your first love. Put a one in the chat, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to see 75 people here. Well, 74, because it's not, not nice to see back I don't know why I said it. I sent your missus two emails. I just didn't mention you. I just didn't mention you. Let me get joking. I just didn't mention you. I sent her dick pictures. Um, yeah, I <laughs> I asked her if you were down to Boza. No, she was upstairs and uh, I shouted her and I just got shouted back. I'm busy. So I, I now. left her alone. Okay, okay. And then she just walked in just now and gone, oh, I've, yeah, I've got his messages. It's seen right. me already on here. I am writing to her email, so I don't consider it a, a necessarily, um, what's the word I'm looking for? practical method of contact alan's dropped an air and center thank you alan you've been remarkably generous recently and obviously lovely to see you although i haven't seen your boat race in a while now as standard procedure in the chat oh yeah mouse catcher said somebody got sent down for the uh, online flashing the other day here yesterday i think it was hang on paco it's just it's tradition in it there's your hello scrubs people. Um, hang on, I need to know about this. Has Mousecat left more information than that? Hello, no, no, there was this. There was this um, he was already on the sex offenders register. <coughs> and they caught him sending dick pics to, I think, some woman and some 15-year-old girl. And he's been sent down for it. Good Lord. For 66 weeks. I mean, you know, he's already a bloody pervert. He should just get locked up and... Did you see that? I was lucky he didn't. Lucky he didn't have stickers on his computer, it? Otherwise, he'd have been fucking banged away for two and a half years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sixty-six weeks. Remember what is sixty-six weeks? This is it's a year and a month, in it. Fifty-two, fifty. No, a year, a year and, and three. And months, Eighteen months. So yeah, we'll do half of that. Nine months might get a bit off for good behaviour. Yeah, nine months. There you go. Hello, Baz. Alex Buchanan, who looks like he might be new on the firm, is thinking, I recognise that name, though. You're not new. Is, do you recognise Alex? You don't need any Tim I Foyle. I've right seen the name before. It's all, all critical and, uh, yeah, yeah. Hello, James. <laughs> oh, wait, did you notice I run out of adjectives? and <laughs> It's all critical and... Um. Trying to think what we are, just and when we speak, and that there you go, there's the cat himself. You can get 66 weeks. Of, I've never sent one, I've never sent one. I the nearest even... I got was uh, with I was at a wedding once, fucking years ago. You know, they put them chuck away cam well, they used to put them chuck away cameras on the tables, didn't they? I heard of that like once, and I thought <coughs> that was very posh to be putting disposable cameras on the tables at weddings. I heard it once, so that's right, so I'm, at, I'm at this posh wedding. 
Hello, mouse cat, by the way. And I took the chuck away camera back up to my hotel room where I was staying. Oh, um, so you didn't of... even use it for reasons they provided it. You just thought free camera, nice. No, 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 no. It gets better than that. I put a pair of glasses, a pair of Ray-Ban sunglasses on my dick and a cigar under it <laughs> and took a picture and then took the camera back downstairs and put it on another table. Ah, oh, beautiful stuff, beautiful stuff. <laughs> so... uh, remi <laughs> reminds me, when we used to get VHS video movies... We, um, my mate had one of those VHS video recorders and he used to tamper with the video cassette that you get the video in because you're not meant to be able to record onto them. But if you fuck, he, he knew what he was doing. And, uh, we used to just record, it started off with pictures. Did they not have a little people. breakout tabs like cassette tabs? Yeah, but he, just you can just put, he puts, there's more to it than that oh, because right. that's what we thought at first. You just you can just stick a bit of screwed up tissue paper or something or a bit of sellotape over it, but there's something else. But it started off just putting our bums. So like halfway through, you're watching the latest video VHS release, and then it just is some gi kids giggling, going, "That's my ass!" <laughs> in the middle of a film. But we started getting a little bit more interesting, and we started telling people what happened. Like halfway through the film. It would just cut quickly come up and it go, the woman's mother's the murderer. That bloke who you think is her next door neighbour is actually her son. You'll see it'll all you'll you'll understand it better now. Just ruin it. Just absolutely ruin it. Interesting, isn't it? The older uh, kids, they like to um it's not that's not just sort of smashing a window, is it? It's kind of asserting yourself. It, it, I, I suppose it's trying to... Ah, oh, there's a word. You want to affect meaning. You know, because there's all this power out there. There's all this sort of information coming at you when you're growing up. So much of it is targeted at you. For instance, 15, 16, 17 years of state education. You know, from like 8 o'clock in the morning till 4 o'clock in the afternoon... You've got all that nonsense, which is, you know, we, we think that the schools have become political. They've always been political. That's what they're for. They set up schools to make workers. They didn't set them up to educate them. If that had, if schools were there to educate you, by the third year, you'd already know how to invest in the stock market. You know, they do that at private schools because, you know, they, you need to know how to do that. How do you make money out of money? How do you make money? Well, with money. That's probably the easiest way. You don't do it by working. You can work and earn the money, but then make the money work for you. But what state state education does is it teaches you, it unlearns you that idea, and then you, you spend your life hand to mouth until you retire. How old now? 110 or something? 300. I ain't retiring. I ain't got any money. No one can. No one's going to retire anymore. That's, that's finished. Unless you're absolutely minted or you're prepared to live with next to nothing, you know, one day you're just going to go, right, kids who are already 25, 30 because they can't afford houses, you know, kids, you've got to fuck off now. can't afford to feed you. Buy, um, right, buy 100 tins of tomato soup off of, from a boot fair <laughs> they're all dented and without labels so sometimes you have fucking peach yes. <laughs> there you go. you've done it haven't you when, when we used to go to art school parties first i week, wasn't poor when i was a kid yeah <laughs> you know we done it deliberately when we were at art school parties first thing when you're in the kitchen just you and your mate no one else is in there in the cupboard, just take the labels off all the tins. <laughs> Enjoy a hit and miss for the next three months. Uh, I don't know. Um, I talked to Pax Max people. He's all right. He had the coof over Christmas, and he, I think it might have rattled him a little bit. He didn't say that, by the way, but someone else who had it had said to me it, it caused him some sort of – it was so intense. He had like an epiphany. So I'm – I'm suggesting maybe Pax Max had something like that. But he's just he's just needs some different spaces at the moment. 
But you know, when when OG scrubs go AWOL, you kind of worry, don't you? We've had a few we've had a few die over the years, which is inevitable. You know, our average age here is something like 40, 45. Um, yeah. So so it was good to hear from him. Well, I said hello to you, JP, 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 JP. Right, I was I was about to put one in the chat, and I can't remember why, Packer. What did I ask? What was I going to say? <coughs> you didn't get that far. You just said put a one in the chat. I'm sure that's as far as it went. Yeah, I know. I'm gutted now. Missy's is going to send you a picture or a clip or something. She says your dick pic. Never sent one. <laughs> yeah, I don't even like not glasses and a cigar. <laughs> 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 I don't like birds sending me minge pics either. Boo pics are quite like, but not minge. Boo pic, he says, preferably. I didn't say that. Is not what I said. That's You've you've changed my uh, lines. She got one of them panoramic cameras, so you might be all right. Yeah, go on, son. That's it. Look, at him. Look at him bigging her up. Amazing. Pizzle will be clean again soon, just to slip his all. Yep. It's your choice. It's your choice, Pizzle. You know the score. It's your choice. Yeah, good to see you, James. Um, Hi, Beth. Oh, you were telling me, Packer, about someone. Ah, oh, I thought you were going to say they got went to prison for charging moderators or something. So, no, that's how we ended up going down the other route. Anyway, so there's 84 people here. We'll, we'll, we'll see if it gets to 100, then I'll ask the question. Hello, Barks. Nice to see you. Hello, Basil. Nice to see you. Hello, Tricky Woo. Oh, this is amazing. Loads of people turning up. Urbex Shawnee says, the minted silver spoon lot will preach about how you've got to work harder to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great call. You have, and you have to got you have you have got to work harder for them to be more successful, yeah. That's how it works. And the thing is, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, I've I've long lost the chip on my shoulder about people being born into money. You know, I was right. There's a bit in my novel where it's quite an interesting. Um, most of the novels in a in a very cheap guest house or in brothels and massage parlors and then towards the end i end up with celebrities essentially in like proper luxury environment the villa was about five grand five thousand dollars a night so you get an idea of the kind of luxury this place was nuts and when you've just come out of er that <laughs> The day Packer, check this out. The day, the day I went over there, because someone who followed me on Twitter, I can't say who it is. I still don't know if I'm going to say who it is in the novel. Um, but even if I don't, you can work it out from what I say about her. Um, she seen me on Twitter say I'm in Patong, so she texted me and said, "I'm in Phuket. I'm in this place called." And she told me, she said, "Pop over if you want." Now, that day, I was still withdrawing, but I was right on the end of it. So just really tired, you know, not... But, you know, I could. I knew that they'd be pissed, and I knew that I could drink. If I drunk, it would be all right. You know, I'd just be a bit fatigued. And it would take the edge off. But that morning, the, the Madame Hassan... The, the madam of the brothel, who's the love interest in the story, she wanted me to eat some cockroaches because I'd never, I'd eaten maggots, I'd eaten snails and all that. And so she's, and she had them there with all her other food. And I, I just went, go on, go on then. There was a conversation leading up to it. I was, we were talking about men and women, and she was like, yeah, but you won't even eat one of them. And, you know, and I was like, it's not that I won't. And she said, well, go on, you know, all this. So I just, and I ate the fucking things. I ate them more now because I get them here. Not many, but my little sticky pad I put down to catch mice and torture them for 24 hours as they scare themselves and gnaw their leg off to death. It's just, a, it's, it, it's now just, a, it's almost like a work of art, like a, a slab. <laughs> An inch deep slab of cockroaches. <laughs> so I've eaten. I, I ate two of them. I just went. That's all right. 
plenty of green leaves and chili sauce and other stuff to get them down. And I said, I said, but they're not wild, are they? They don't live on shit and that. They're fed like, I don't know, grass or whatever. She went, I don't know what they eat. She went, I caught them here. Oh, brothel cockroaches, spunk belly cockroach. What'd you have for breakfast? Spunk belly cockroach. Cool. <laughs> right. Fed so on I, and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just imagine what what do they eat in a in a in a, a house of ill repute, we should say. A lot um, of protein. Yeah. In fairness, probably a lot of mine. But um then I've gone to like proper luxury. There was a reason I was telling you this. Oh yeah. And one thing I've noticed out uh, when I when I've met uh, you know I've met a lot of celebrities, but it's not really a celebrity thing. It's more to do. It's more a money thing. It's more having having it on a plate as a child. Do you know what I mean? You know, best schools, private schools, private tuition, finishing schools. Parents have got contacts in government in there and there, and you know. It, and I've had this so many times. They always try and sell me a slightly, they try and spin it in some way that, because they can't lie, they can't outright say, actually, we were skin and, uh, you know, I've had it hard. So I, I can't tell you what she said because the, the actual, you can't, you know, there's <laughs> slander is a thing. But, you know, I've had, I had one person try and tell me their family was one of the five New York Mafia families. Not her direct family, but when they went out to New York, they, they realised that they had extended family turned out to be one of the... You know, and there's always, they always try and give it an edge. You know, yes, I'm posh as hell and I've had it all on a plate. I don't mind that. I just want you to make, make use of it. You know, don't... There's a great book by a French writer called Pierre Bourdieu, and it's called Distinction. Um, I have to get the subtitle because that's what makes it. Pierre Bourdieu, Distinction. It's something like a cultural um, something of taste. Pierre Bourdieu distinction a social critique of the judgment of taste and there's a bit in it where he says the thing that upsets poor people the most about the rich and this isn't just him being a french philosopher uh the thing that I, you know this is through study and he, he gives he shows you examples and shows you how why these how these things have built up through history and the the arrival of privileged groups and, and, and politeness and tact and all that. And he says it's more what they do with their money. On an unconscious level, that's what pisses the poor people off, you know. Because when you see one of these working-class people win the pools, they rarely try and be a posh person. Look, you smile then. I don't know whether you read something in the chat or you... No, 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 I'm smiling because normally they just go and splurge it, didn't they? And they build a go-kart track, but not like your son's, like a motorbike for a quad bike track in the garden, a swimming pool with like flumes and all that, that they don't realise is going to cost £500 a week just to look after it. You know, they hmm. buy these massive houses that they don't realise are going to cost £500 a week to keep warm. They, they end up living in one room and it's just full of pot noodles, full of cigarette butts. You know, they, they don't manage to pull it off because they haven't got that outlook on life. Not always, obviously. But I can't, I don't know what it was, but I read an article somewhere. It might have just been a blog, but it was pretty well researched. And um, people who've won lotteries, it's something like a 60% less happy rate and and significantly like the suicide rate is incredible um early deaths are incredible you know the last thing a weekend cocaine ed you know a weekend <laughs> yeah the last thing a weekend google uh 
blaster needs is a couple of million quid in the bank. And, well, hello? No, I don't want my usual eight ball. I want a couple of ounces. Yeah, man, watch me. And, you know, five weeks later, they're still awake and they're going, I don't like pasta in the shape of spaceships. It tells me I'm not my own dad. And then, yeah, okay. And what someone in that state doesn't need is uh, 900, uh, uh, I can't do the maths. You know what I mean? The rest of the money in the bank. So, yeah, James says I used a dark box, done it by feeling. <laughs> uh, okay. But, yeah, you know, you, you – I mean, I was talking – I think I mentioned this the other day, but I've got a few mates, all entrepreneurs. I, I'm on a forum with them. It's a forum for entrepreneurs. And we all said that if we'd have known about investing in our 30s, we'd all have been retired in our by the time we were 40, 45 max. Now, I didn't do that. I spent – uh 150 grand on chinese whores in just under two well about 18 months year and a half i was wearing four thousand pound suits that i was having made i had a fucking hussar's jacket made with real gold in the beading and i had a fucking great time and i was saying this i said so you can argue i could have just you know it's not out of you know I, I was I was it was totty central it was party central I was going on early every other month it was incredible my thirties and you know is it is it worth retiring at forty five and and not having all all that time I said because you can't do that when you're forty five you haven't you're not you haven't got the strength for it and also you're forty five it's a bit creepy and um, and we, were, we all said the same. And then one of them said to me, yeah, but you could have been writing full time for the last 13 years. And that hit home a bit bad. Because this seven-year novel, it's not a seven-year novel, it's a, it's a two-year novel. I just, I've been working, haven't I? I've been YouTubing. And... So that, that was a bit cuntish of him. <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's a point a couple more super chats are coming absolutely lovely um let me um catch them alan's dropped another one in having both knees replaced oh my days so a friend of mine had this alan we looked at it didn't we we looked it uh, at it on this channel um So, Alan, is this the one? Because <laughs> we've done this, didn't we? Alan, thank you for the donation, but I want to get into this. I've got someone else's leg here specifically for this uh, demonstration. So is it the one where they they cut they <laughs> cut the back of your knee off, off, out, they cut the back of your knee out, take they cut your bone off sort of here, cut your bone off here, and hammer the, the new part into that bone, hammer the new part into that bone, and then you've got a new plastic knee there. It's one of them, isn't it? Now, you having them both done. My mate, he was 55, and it was just agony walking. You know, he could walk, but it was in agony, and his knees would all flare up and... And he he, he he was getting them both done. And I said to him, you scared? Excuse me. He said, I was. He said, but I just decided to find out about it. And he looked into the whole history of how that, those knee joints, how they've progressed over the years and how the surgery has progressed over the years. And he worked out, he learned exactly how it all works and all that malarkey. And, uh, yeah nothing he's he had them both replaced i think he had them both done at the same time weirdly yeah he did I, i'm never 100 percent, but I, I think he had them both done at the same or not obviously at the same time like two <laughs> sets of doctors on each knee but um yeah he, he, that was uh 15 years ago and 
I talk to him regularly and he's never said he's, he's got any problems with his knees. So when's that happening, Alan? When did you say? First one, May the 9th. Well, let us know nearer the time and uh, we'll do some kind of uh, communal consciousness knee sending. We'll be the last knee benders. We'll have a knees up. There you go. That's what he's here for, ladies and gentlemen. That's what he does. He doesn't say a lot, but when he does, it's the words I wish I'd said. Thank you, Alan, and, and good luck with that. Are you scared about that, Alan? Or are you just... This is interesting because it's kind of what the stream's about. Are you scared? Are you scared? Or are you just looking forward to getting it done so that you can walk? That I'd, I'd really like to know your thoughts on it. I'd be scared any time I went in and got put under. Hang on. We'll, we'll, we'll deal with Packer. What's that? I'd be scared any time I went into hospital or get put under to have something done. Really? Yeah. Well, you don't like the idea of a general anaesthetic? I don't like the idea of them fucking something up and killing me or make, crippling me or something. I've never, I'd, never, I'd never thought of it that way. Alan's just, you know, Alan's deleted his last answer. He's now, he's going to now write, I'm a little, I am now a bit scared of him fucking it up and crippling me. I hadn't thought of that before. <laughs> um, yeah, but if it's already fucked, you know, if you're, if yeah. you're having a yeah. new knee and then you come out and they go, now nah, we fucked it. You haven't gained or lost. You've actually just had quite a nice hit. Oi, be honest, Packer. This, look, this is why I ate. I don't hate. That's just oh, the way I've been learned talk to speak. You know, we were talking about things like ring girls and grid girls and all that nonsense. Yep. Hospital. I despise hospitals. I think watching my father die in one has just put me off them for life. I think if I ever get sick as an older man, that's that's my, that's me done. You know, everyone around me will be going, "You need to go to hospital," and I'll be like. No, nah, no, nah. it's my my time is here. I'm not. So, I'm not so sure the human mind is able to cope with certain things. I know someone recently who's been told they've only got a few years to live. Oh, you might make two. You might make ten. I don't think you know that is something we should never know. Fuck that. And so, yeah, I don't. I. I I'm not so sure about that. I got distracted back. I was saying something about. He was about to read that mouse cat super chat. Yeah, no, there was something about the knees, the anesthetic. Oh, I've done a lot of research because there's a, the, the, the etymology of epidural. It comes from hard mother. Which is ironic, really, because if you have an epidural, you're not that hard, are you, as a mother? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that is in my book. So work it out when you get there. Mouse Cat says this. Thanks for the air and center, Mouse Cat. Chris, if you want to watch something, there's the eight. Right. Ah, I want to talk about that because we nearly got to that. The gen. Ah, so that's not what I thought it was. You can find it. Turn brains off. It's entertaining. Watch the trailer. It's got drugs, creams, the usual. So is this a series based on the movie, The Gentleman? Because Sounds I watched like that. that Shane Ritchie movie, if, if, I'm, if I remember rightly, and I watched it, and this is what I was talking about at the beginning of the stream about production values and how the culture industry uses production values to, to slip messaging through via aesthetic novelty and attraction because the film the gentleman which is another shane ritchie crime drama is multicultural propaganda from start to finish and it really really is i mean once you once you choose to not indulge in the in the production values in the well in the production values you suddenly see that it if anyone's seen the gentleman, you'll know what I mean. There's different, there's different tribes that are usually ethnically um, 
separated and they all battle each other and a certain tribe lose strangely enough again <laughs> so is that a series or is it like uh, it is are you saying it is pack have you read someone said in the chat yeah nice one. I think. i'll check it out because it might help as well with uh the video i'm making about production values it's reminded me of the movie anyway did you watch shogun this week yet I see that the I see that the critical drinkers done a review on it. If I have yeah, I watched that. Have you seen it? Does he like it? He does. Yes. I thought it would get a drinker recommends, but it didn't, did it? That's they're the ones that he thinks are top, but they might just be movies. So, so hang on. So that was Friday nights. Oh no, that's after this stream then. Yeah, oh, I watched it yesterday. No, I don't it's want to good. know anything about it's it. Good. <laughs> Did you have you been watching it since the beginning? Oh yes, because we talked about we talked about it all last week, didn't we? Of course, it's good, is it? Yeah. How hot is that bird out of ten? I know it's not your cup of tea, but if you had to drink tea, it would be that she's, one, wouldn't it? She's a nine. Yeah. Solid nine. She's a solid nine point eight. Yeah. The only reason she doesn't get a ten is because she's not sitting on my lap. Willow Wookie, do you think your novel will be finished for Christmas? I. <laughs> <laughs> He's thought that for the last three Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> for the last four or five, I think you'll find. Glass, the perfect timing. Absolutely perfect, of course. Alan, look what glass is. She's thrown a scrubism at you. Ah, oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that makes more sense, doesn't it? And then they just put in those things and pull it apart. So, Alan, oh, Alan somewhere will have said, whether he's got the fear or not. My guess, knowing Alan, I'm not going to read any messages further on. Hello, Emma, by the way. Emma Glass. Nice to see you. Oh, um, he has. He's put another super chat. I think that Alan's too tough for fear. There is a risk of losing the leg if it goes south. Stiff up a lip, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have, you, have you ever met Alan? Packer on a stream. I don't think so. You just sort of get the impression he's had a tough life and it's made a tough man out of him. He 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 he, he hardly said anything and he didn't give a shit about not saying anything. He he, he come on a couple of streams actually and in, in the uh the private ones for the members that you know I might have my memory's fucking shocking. Really one every two shocking. years. That's how that's how you You're know regular. Yeah, that, that's elitist, isn't it? Alan, thank you for that, mate. Um, yeah, but I think that that they, I think they probably have to tell you that there's a risk, but it's probably so, you know, it's probably so unlikely. I, I yeah, I can't imagine why. Well, let, let's not get into it. Let us know nearer the time, Alan, because yeah, uh, we'll scare the pants off you then. <laughs> we won't. <laughs> right, okay. There's Emma just helping things along nicely. Right. <laughs> Tricky Woo says, as long as I can still walk, forget cutting on me, even though it hurts. I don't know, man. I don't know. I was very proud of my mate who had his um, knees sorted. But I can't send him the video because the overtakes because his class too big. I don't know. I've edited it a bit. <laughs> what have I <laughs> Your miss is talking. Oh, right. Okay. It was really loud. It was weird. Just suddenly a woman's voice going, I can't see it on the videotape because I've edited a bit. I've missed a bit. <laughs> and she's trying to send you a video. She's edited it down, but the file's still too big. Oh, my God. I don't know so she's just sent you a picture it. instead. Okay. Oh, of course. You give, me the, give me the shivers, aren't you? Um, Pizzle has spent loads of time in hospital, and he liked it. <laughs> oh, that's what I was going to say. Nice one, Pizzle. Lovely. Right. 
We've got 100 people here. Lovely. That's the 100 popper. Have you got an 100 popper in your packer? <laughs> That's ridiculous. He has. Right, people, ladies and gentlemen, and blogs. Hospital isn't a pleasant time unless you're Pizzle and you're managing to uh, get narcotics out of the staff. But would you have a better experience? I can say this more for men because I'm a heterosexual male. Would you have a better experience if your nurses were stunning bimbos or whatever your cup of tea is, you know, whatever you like, like, you know, a cup of, you know, I'm thinking a few Southeast Asian sort of little bunnies with pigtails and stilettos. Oh my God! You know, not not it's not not. You know, they're still wearing nurses' outfits, but they're PVC, PVC ones. <laughs> really sure. The zip right at the front. <laughs> Laces, yeah. Um, but put a one in no. Not a one, sorry if you've already done it. Out of a hundred, how much would that improve your stay in hospital? Imagine you had to do five weeks while they took your pancreas out and had to do some other. I don't know enough about it to know what would take five weeks. But if all your nurses were absolute salts, you weren't allowed to touch them. You weren't allowed to go, hello, love. <coughs> oh, nice bit of ass. Oh, <laughs> no, you respected them and they were nurses, but they were hot. And you can you can make a four out of ten bird hot with a bit of makeup and an outfit. Easy. So out of a hundred, how much would that improve your hospital stay? And and ladies too, but obviously the other way around, unless you come from the Isle of Lesbos, in which case, if you do end up in hospital, give me a call. <laughs> I'll come and give you a massage. And the reason I say that is because we're always told how important it is to keep positive in hospital, when you, you know, keep positive, be nice to staff and all that lot. But they don't do the very simple thing that would almost make you not want to leave. You know, when when it's like, okay, uh, Mr. Packer, um, it's time to go today. It's all done. You, we've done the treatment. There's, you'll see a nurse on the way out for your tablets, and you know when you've got to take them. You'll be like, I'll, 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 I'll do another week if, if you want. <laughs> and also, you'll help them as well. You'll be more helpful. You wouldn't just throw. You wouldn't. You know, you wouldn't be a grumpy old sod just like finishing your pack of crisps and throwing the crisps on the floor and. You know, all that, like I would be for sure. No, My candy be. makes anywhere better, doesn't it? Exactly. And I'm talking about for men and women, you know, it, but you're just not, it, they deny one of the fundamentals of human existence, seduction, desire. And I think more people would survive as well. Because, you know, the amount that the positive thinking can do so much to change the way you feel. I've seen that happen. I've seen it happen. You know, I've seen people talk themselves into a smack withdrawal. Pizzle will understand this one. I've seen people, they've had a, they had their last hit at like 9 o'clock in the morning. It's 1 o'clock in the afternoon. There's no way they're withdrawing. Not a chance on hell. Like, you can do like... Before it sort of starts kicking in, I reckon you can do 15, 16, 17, 18 hours, really, if you really have to. If you've got some there, you won't start withdrawing, right? But if, you, if your dealer's like, I ain't got none, and then you re ring someone else, no, there's nothing about. And then you go to the bottom of the barrel and you're ringing up lizard jane and she's like i ain't got fucking anything but if you bring the money around i'll probably steal it off you and i've seen people suddenly start getting the panic on and then they start sweating and then they start shivering and, and they're bringing on the symptoms psychosomatically 
because they're negative thinking. It's all gone wrong for them. And so I think you'd have a better hospital success rate if you'd done a very simple thing. Look at that uh, Vietnamese airline that has the staff in their underwear. That, that airline is run by a woman and she's Vietnam's first billionaire. Now, if you've got to get a business flight or whatever, that flying's horrible. Unless you've got the money for first class or business, it's horrible. It's like cattle shed, you know. But if the staff are walking around in their underwear, it's surprisingly, you're going to pick it every time if you've got that option. Obviously not with your family and all that. I'm not talking that would be ridiculous, but if you're just I still would. <laughs> me too, I'm you know, <laughs> just covering my back. <laughs> but you know, they can do that in Vietnam. Can you imagine British Airways or Virgin or someone that <laughs> call, call the company Virgin because ho ho ho, you know, it's just a joke. But if you actually were to yeah, we're gonna have we're gonna have our female staff in their underwear. And there'd, there'd be women queuing up for the gig because there's women that like doing that sort of thing. That You know, would you rather be a stripper full of with loads of piss heads around you, throwing water at you, and booze at you and that, and going, yeah, I've had enough of you and your fat ass, you fucking bitch. Or just going up and down the aisle, hello, sir, would you like a cup of tea? Oh, blah, blah, blah. blah. Lovely. Lovely, you probably get paid more than a stripper and you get to travel, that you know, all that free travel. But no, you're not allowed because men and women they don't fancy each other or something. I don't quite know how it works out. You, or you're not allowed to. <laughs> is it what is it, Packer? You're just not allowed to admit it. I mean that. That's not a, that's not rhetoric. I'm asking you, what is the situation? I don't know anymore. Yeah, no, I, we it's, it's in- never affected me, so we I'm live in a contradiction. We we live in a contradiction. I mean, look at Miss World. A Ukrainian, a, a Ukrainian won Miss Japan, and uh, an African won Miss England. Now, all right, uh, you know, we we you know, it's a globalist world. So okay, but as I said to you last week, what's the competition here? Who who's competing with who? You know, it might still be Miss World, but that's not Miss England because what is England? And that's not Miss Japan because what is Japan? You know, you could probably put a giraffe in that competition. And if if enough people voted and the winner of this year's Miss World... It's Miss Norway, and it's a giraffe. And you wouldn't be able to say anything because we, we there's no values anymore. There's no standards. There's no meaning. We've reached the end of history. It's and kind of you, the emperor's new clothes, isn't it, now, with all this nonsense? You can't – it's obvious. Everyone can see it, but no one can say anything. No one's allowed to say anything. What was Someone's that? trying to sue J.K. Or no, someone was trying to get J.K. Rowling arrested because they kept referring to him as a bloke when because they're a bloke. That's it. Yeah, dead naming they call it, didn't they? Actually, he was very upset. <laughs> I mean, it's like that whole bimbofication thing. You know, they've got their hands all over it. And I'm sorry, but hyperfemininity <laughs> does not involve a willy. Did I, t- did I tell you this? I told. I think I told someone. Who was I tell? I might have told forty two, but I looked into that. I did. <laughs> I did some research. <laughs> okay. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Online, and there's yeah. a thing where they do a, a sissification. Oh, I've seen it's gross. It's so disgusting. It's, it's weird, isn't like, it? Yeah. Yeah. So that was odd, and that was the end of that rabbit hole. I turned around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's done yeah. Now. <laughs> but there is pushback, though. Some of those bimbofication bimbo sites outright say this isn't for transsexuals or transvestites. This is this is about women and heterosexuals. Yeah, no, you this sissification have... thing is kind of trying to convince blokes that they want to be women. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's rubbish. Hello, Otto. 
The critical drinker and nerdrotic were on Piers Morgan. Well, they probably get more views than him, in fairness. You know, <laughs> YouTube channels are smashing the mainstream media. Barclay's hoping that my novel will get released before his son's fifth birthday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice one. Basil Forty has just dropped a bomb. What does what do people think about Gove trying to ban PA? It's first I've heard of it. All right, so they've got some um, new bill coming through about fucking about terrorism or I don't know something some some nonsense because they got scared by the um, Palestinian protests. And um, because it's it, and but when they, when they've announced it, they can't possibly say the truth, so they have to say it's to uh, battle against you know far right because the, the rise of the far right that apparently yeah. only they can see. And PA was named as one of the groups that you know needs to be watched, needs to be kept an eye on. I'm looking at it now. I mean, uh, this is what I think of it, and this isn't, I, I don't think it makes me hyper intelligent but i called it well i think most of us called it you know i deleted over a thousand videos because nationalism is essentially illegal you know uh, it's you know it's it isn't really but if they want to they if you know if you've ever expressed any nationalist ideas made a few jokes online, you're already on a file somewhere. So if that, so if you end up, I don't know, you know, you know, imagine in 10 years you end up doing something else and become famous for something funny and interesting, you know, you win biggest fucking marrow at the local farmers club or whatever. They dig that up about you. Mm. They'll they can imprison you for the things you've said and done. It's that sort of you know, there's, there's enough there for them to say, no, you've been this, you've been anti-Semitic, you've been homophobic, you've been this, this, and you haven't. You haven't. I mean, I've, you know, I've, I've never been a member of PA. I've never attended any of their events, but I've no, but read their been, website. You have been indoctrinating children into the Nazi. Grooming teenage Nazis, Group, yeah. if you don't mind. <laughs> You're leering. <laughs> Please. Please get it. Woody wrong. made me laugh the other day because he was on there. Was, someone was on the stream doing the uh, this year's um, Hope Not Hate Awards thing. I'm just changing the batteries, but I can hear you. Go on. And uh, he's uh, Woody described that that you know, every year Hope Not Hate bring a list out of all the worst possible yeah. people, and you made it in one year. Yeah, uh, Woody's made it in with the uh, Woodlander Initiative, and he just put in the comment that it's like. It's like the Oscars for the right wing. <laughs> Just sitting there laughing about it. It's like, I'll oh, go on, on then. Hang on, hang on. The Woodland, because he's suggesting what is essentially a collective land owning project. Yeah. yeah he's yeah. made the hope not hate extremist list. Yeah. Well, there you go. I mean, oh, that's my missus. And I think she's had a couple of drinks. She's going to go, can I stay at your hands? Whereas she's full. Hello, love. Hang on, mate. I'm straight. I'm doing YouTube. I told you. Yeah, but I love you. Yeah. Oh, oh you need it. Oh, you dirty bitch. <laughs> oh, you fucking filthy thing. Yeah, you want some of that? You want some of that? It's too big for you. All right, love, bye. Mwah, I love you. Her <laughs> uh, mum stood next to her. No. Yeah, and grandmother, 107 <laughs> year old grandmother. They can't speak English, though. It's so funny. We sometimes sit around eating dinner. I think they would have got that. that. I, would've, I think they would have got the gist of that. No, they didn't. We out here, I don't know. Well, I say out here as if it's. I think it's only to Cambodia. But you get screens on your phones. Oh, yeah, look at that. Me and my missus. But at a slight angle, you can't right. see it. So if, unless you're head on, like there, it's gone. So they can't see it. <laughs> so they might have heard me going, oh, oh, oh. And my missus did get her tits out. So who knows? 
They're peasants. You can do anything. <laughs> um, right. Where were we? I'm not, sorry. I'm all off track. So the Woodlander is, has made that ridiculous list that gets about 30 people watching it, and they tweet it, and the replies are people saying, what? The Woodlander? You're mental. I don't know what it was. It might have been 42 stream, maybe, or rags is and it probably got more attention there than it has yeah, anywhere else there you go. there's such a low traction organization it's funny in it because i can't remember his name the fellow who runs it but he looks like one of that that me that angry mean bloke you know that sort of line drawing with this prickly beard going with the glasses he looks like uh thingy knowles isn't it john knowles tim knows bob knowles I'm, I'm just gonna say all the names yeah but he looks like Nick Lowe's. Nick Lowe's, that's it. He looks like the angry meme fella. So Gove's got in all sorts of trouble. About it was Toffee it. and Sensum stream. There you go. I'll get, I'm on so many. It just, I watched so Alan, many. Alan, Alan, Alan would, uh, it's, it's only 10 out of 100, Alan would say. Not, wouldn't, doesn't, not interested, Alan. Would it, why not? Would it? Do you think that they would not be as good a, 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 as good as their job because <laughs> they were hired for the way they look? <laughs> Bit of diversity and inclusion. <laughs> More bimbos. Um, I'm gonna did anyone else? Oh, Alan can't you can't walk. Oh, so you're you're absolutely just you just want them to get on with it. Fucking hell. So Alan, how long have you not been able to walk for? And how long have you known when it's coming? What, you literally can't walk? Wow. I bet that's been really trying. Like, what a... I can't imagine... You know, if I, I've got a recurring back injury, it's not nothing serious, but it does make just a simple walk to, like, the cafe around the corner a little bit painful. And it really pisses me off. Because it, it's it's just a little bit, it gets in the way of my life. But if you can't actually walk, I imagine you've been to some places you've not been to before, which is ironic, really, when you can't walk. <laughs> I mean, in your head, Alan. <laughs> rubbing it in. Uh, yeah, we will have you on in a minute. I mean, Packer will have you off. <laughs> Larry of the Void says, medical malpractice still number three. Oh, look at Eleanor wishing Alan. Yeah, yeah. I think we should wish Alan, uh, well, we'll do it nearer the time, actually, when he when he needs it. But that's very lovely of you, Eleanor. How lovely. Right. Okay. Um, oh, look, everyone's on it. Hello, Floella. Yeah, I think so. LC350. I mean, ladies, imagine, you know, you're in hospital and your doctor is just your perfect, like, just a really handsome man with an incredible manner and just comes, you know, strolls up to your bed, like Sean Connery or something in his prime. And just sits on your end of your bed. <laughs> yeah, we go. yeah. And there we go. You've, you've only got seven weeks to live and you'll be like oh only seven what a terrible time would you like a cup of tea with me i think i think i'm not i'm not even joking when i think they should do things like that because i used to our culture used to be like that on tv shows when they were showing prizes they'd have beautiful people standing next to them not only women Sale of the century, there'd be sometimes there'd be like the handsome man going. The, now there is a little bit of a problem because female sexuality is not so about how things look in the first instance, as man, you know, men can just look at birds for hours and thoroughly enjoy it. I think women get a little bit bored because their sexuality is a little bit more complex, and 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 I'm a little bit jealous of that. To be honest with you, I'm not saying all. I'm not saying male sexuality is only about looks, but you know, you <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, men. Um, but we used to do that. It was just acknowledged that there was 
male female attraction and it still is the huge majority of the population but oh no and even if you were a bondre then you know when you go in there they say would you prefer your sexy nurses to be male or female you can choose have a mixture if you want you know just i'm not i'm not joking people you know they talk about all these 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 little you know fine lines that can be the difference between living or dying. All right. Yes, Cat says when he was six, he was in hospital for three weeks and fell in love with loads of hot Irish lady nurses. <laughs> when he was yeah. six. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but yeah, yeah, without a doubt. There used to be a bird who lived in my street called Janine, and she was just tarted up from top to bottom. And all the other housewives weren't. They were like proper fishwives, you know, curlers in their hair, fucking apron on, fingers bitten down to the quick, and fucking, sick, you know, nicotine orange. And Janine comes out of nowhere with her massive hair and her little Madonna lace gloves and her big hoop earrings and her massive purple lips. All the blokes fancied her, but because I was eight, I could just lay down on her lap and get touch as much of my bare flesh against hers and her little micro mini skirt with my arm on it, just with a bow, you know, like an eight year old boner. And she'd just drag her nails over my belly, like backwards and forwards, sometimes being a bit down under the rim of my sort of jeans, you know, and I, wait, I'd be breathing in. I so think like, she knew exactly what she was doing, and that's yeah. a bit weird. Well, that's a bit weird, isn't it? Or was she doing it? It was amazing. <laughs> no. I had, I've had this in treatment. I, there was a bloke in treatment who was 15, and he had an affair with this 36-year-old married woman, and he said, he talked all about it, and they said to him, do you realise that this was an abusive relationship? And I sat in that group therapy, went off about three hours, and I slowly watched them brainwash him into taking something that was clearly something special and, and, and a fond memory, and they, they, try, they sort of brainwashed him into thinking he'd been abused. And I called it. I said, I'm not having this. I said, he didn't come in here and say, oh, I've got this thing I need to, I've, I've got a lot of shame. No, you drew it out of him. And he actually said he feels guilty because people tell him he should be. And all you've done is back that up. No, I didn't mean it like that. I meant. No, I know. I know. I know. Go on. Go on. What she was doing was still a bit weird, regardless of whether you was enjoying she it. She was only about 18 herself, though. Do you know what I mean? She had some rich husband. But no, Packer, I'm exaggerating a little bit for effect. She wasn't like sticking her hands down my fucking mom's pubis. But she, you know, she was just sort of tickling the, the kid's belly. You know, I was a little, I was a very late developed. I was probably looked more like a five year old. And she was, you know, you know, and all, all the blokes in the street would just be looking at me thinking, you can't, you can't. And I just be like, oh. Well, that was my other question. Was it also partly to just wind up all the other blokes in the room? No, she was very stupid as a person. I mean, well, actually, that's not true. She actually was having the best life of anyone in the street because she would pulled some bloke who had plenty of money and she had, she'd done nothing all day but her makeup. And um, seemed to be having quite quite the time of it, you know. She had a nice little motor and that, and um, you know she couldn't really talk to the adults because the women didn't like her, and the men loved her. <laughs> so she was stuck with me, which was terrible. But I, I brought that up in treatment before, and they again they were like, "Well, that's abusive," and I said, "Well." I love it. I, I have yeah, very okay. fond memories of those times. So, you know, you're going to have to define abusive in this context. Are you suggesting it damaged me? Because if you want to talk about that, when I mentioned the magician sexually abused me a couple of weeks ago, we were over that in five minutes. We're still 45 minutes into fucking Janine giving me a boner. <laughs> you know. Anyway, treatment centres... 
Leon, hello Leon. Leon lost his virginity as a 38-year-old man. No, to a 38-year-old man when he was 14, and jolly good fun it was too. See, that's what um that's what Milo got in trouble for, didn't he? Milo got in trouble for that because he said that. He said he said the same thing. You know, when I was 14 years old, and this doesn't have to be for anyone, I was banging my bollocks batty every night like fantasizing like nobody's business i used to have this fantasy that these three <laughs> birds well one of them was janine would climb in through my bedroom window i had to, it's quite funny actually because i need it needed to be realistic to get the, the the you know to make it feel better they had to somehow get into my house and they couldn't come in downstairs because my mum and dad were down there but it, it was weird because of my imagination They'd have like trouble getting through the window, <laughs> We'd getting their clothes up to that. And I'd be like, oh, come on, just get in. <laughs> I couldn't sort of, the fantasy wouldn't allow them to sort of graciously kind of like liquid get through the window. They'd be like, oh, hang on a minute, I've, 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 I've <laughs> torn a hole in the bra. <laughs> oh, for fucking hell. I don't know, you know, I don't know. I, I, you know, much like medicine, medicine is such a broad stroke, isn't it? People are different. It's like all this fucking mental illness nonsense. You've got this. Oh, autism, it's on a spectrum. Well, if it's on a spectrum, where does it stop and not being autistic start? Uh, because if, you're, if it's on a spectrum, it doesn't exist. Because that spectrum has got autism at this end a little bit less 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 not autistic so it's just human we're just different and so in cases like that they should be treated on, on an individual basis leon just said it, it was jolly good fun that doesn't sound like someone who's traumatized to me now i know full well the entire psychiatric Almost the entire psychoanalytic, and without doubt, no, I already said the psychiatric, and most uh, clinical psychologists will say that Leon isn't aware of the damage that done him. And I'm not buying that because Leon's just told ain't me. Ain't done him any damage, then, has it? I, yeah, I'm going to trust him on that. I'm going to trust him more than them because they, they don't even know Leon, but they will, they will tell you that. But they've read about it. No, it might damage some people. It, it might damage some people, yeah. It's an interesting topic. Right, Packer, can you hold the fault while I have a wee? Yeah. You don't have, you don't have to do it. Yeah, anything. I'll just sit here and not say anything like, like normal. Read out some comments or something. Well, Basil, honestly, it's almost like quadrupled in like the last 30 years, not because there's more people who've got mental illnesses, but because they've quadrupled the amount of mental illnesses that exist. I'm not making that up. The yeah, DSM, I would say it's a lot more the addition of metal like candy. They 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 so, know they know they've made up more illnesses. This is a fact. They they the the, the, the DSM one, the first one, which was curated and written by people 100 percent of them worked for big pharma so they made the first the psychiatric guide the, the the diagnostic and statistical manual um for psychiatry and they made all the all these syndromes and disorders up like tourette syndrome i've got a new tourette syndrome video to show you and we'll talk about this let me have a laugh well i'm not singing you a song fluella it's not happening. I would have to be very drunk to do that. I am just sitting here reading comments now, not out loud. <coughs> I don't. Do you reckon he has a sit down piss, our pal? I'm 50 50 on that one. He might do. <laughs> he just shat it from the bog. Yeah, you'll be on in a minute, Bartley. You and uh, our power. Oh. Mm. 
Uh, he's flushed. Is he washing his hands? Oh, I'm 100% sit down pisser. There you go. Yeah, man. If there's a seat, I'll take it. Well, I mean, what's all, it's stupid, isn't it? If you're on the bus and there's a seat, you sit down. Well, stupid. Right. Um, Rags, who I haven't said hello to. Are you still here, Rags? Is he? I ain't seen him. No, I have. Hello, Barrett Zippo. Keep the grift alive, people. I'll check entropy because the blogs did pop in for five minutes. Nothing in entropy. If anyone has donated on entropy, let me know because uh, there's something wrong there then. I thought I'd see him earlier. Look, what, Rags isn't here? What, that Rags? <laughs> okay, I won't ask him anything. Fair enough. Rags, was it you that sent me the video of the, the young kid with Tourette's? And if it was you, can you send it to me again on WhatsApp? So, a little bit of background, people. We all remember John is not mad. Rags, let me know in the chats whether um, it was you first, because then this is all timed well. You're all right, Toffee. No worries. I don't know half the people here half the time anyway. No, absolutely, Moody Edge. We've done a... Hello, mate, by the way. We done, I've done a video on the whole thing showing loads of clips. It is too bad. What the fuck is going on? He's good that way. Never a lot, but always. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, hang on. Ready? Pull back. And clap. <laughs> nice on, Packer. Yeah, man. If everyone dropped two bond in every week, I'd be able to give up work. Every stream, actually, not every week. Um,. <laughs> so we all remember um, John is not mad. It was the first let's exploit people uh, behavioural problems, not pathological, not mental illness. The, the, the mind can't be ill. The mind is an idea. If you go to a doctor and say to him, can you have a look at my mind, please? I think there's something wrong with it. What, 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 what? What's he going to do? That's what a psychotherapist does. Uh, they do it by talking to you. But a, a psychiatrist will treat your mind by giving your brain drugs. Yeah, okay, that, that makes all sorts of uh, sense. I'm on you, Alan. I'm on you. I'm on it. It's all good, mate. I've been down for five months. A hundred years from now, no one will remember us anyway. <laughs> That's the spirit. Don't say that. I've put a lot of work into this novel. I just want a little bit of immortality. So you haven't walked for five months. And so you've still got two weeks of this month, April, and then one of May, four, five, six. So you've still got seven weeks. So that'll be six and a half months you haven't been able to walk. Fuck me. Fuck me. Bless you, though, Alan. I mean, once that's done, if, you know, if it goes as well as my mates, he's, you know, he's now 67 and he, he goes he goes on boating holidays with his kid and all sorts. He had his kid when he was 53. Good man. Yeah, yeah. Gives me hope. Nice one, Alan. Thanks for the super chat. Yeah, my boss had his latest one when he was about 53, 54. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I don't want to go into the details of why me and my missus are putting ours off, but that's probably the age I'll be doing it, 54. Alan, you got my email, chris at chrisdangerfield.com, and we can sort out a Skype chat. I, I, I kind of get the impression you're the sort of bloke who's not going to do that, but <laughs> the, the invite is there. He's from, he's from Appalachia, Um from up same man as Stephen Campbell. Isn't that where um Yeezy's? Nah, Alan, uh, nah, uh, man, that's just an insult, isn't it? What, one with wheels on it, like the old Robert Zimmerman, sort of... I suppose it's preferable to the little car, uh, the pavement car. Jesus. Love you too, Alan. Everyone here. That's that's what we do here. It's a, it's an amazing community. It blows my mind, really. 
Right. Um, there was gonna. There was. There was. Go, I was going to say something. Oh yeah, rags. Are you there, rags? Did you? Was it you that sent me that clip? Because Tourette's. Right now, listen. I'm not saying that these people haven't got problems. Right. See, look. Skins mentioned this to me before, and you know, I'm. I'm not saying that that he didn't have problems. The, the only distinction I'm making is that they're behavioural, not pathological. You know, the skin, I'll send you a video, not that it will necessarily change your mind, but it'll, you'll see where I'm coming because the anti-anti-psychiatry the, the anti brigade, they love bringing up um, uh, um, schizophrenia. But there's no... There's no um, there's, well, what's the word? There's no biological markers for um, mental illnesses. And when people say, well, if you've got this, there are, but that's because your behaviours have caused them. If you, if you sit in a dark room for 10 years because your behaviour, because you're suffering or you're struggling, that will eventually change your brain. You know that that that's how it works. That's how trauma works. But but we've had it wasn't damn um, right. I'll see if I can find it because it's it's really worth watching because it, it's all there. Um, anyone in the chat send me the video with the 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 young fellow with Tourette's. I've really got to show you this because remember when we watched the one about. The, the girl who was making cakes in front of her family. She put a video on YouTube, I've got Tourette's Syndrome, which is in the DSM. And she's got her whole family there, and she's decided to make cakes, and so she's throwing eggs about, deliberately chose one of the worst things she could have done, and she spends the whole time just slagging off her family, calling her nan an ugly old cunt and things like that. And it's like, yeah, you've got problems. You need help. I'm not disputing that. And it's probably come from some kind of neglect, some kind of abuse, some kind of trauma, but it's behavioural. You know, when they give you drugs, they'll just sedate you. They'll just sedate you. And then when you're like, hello, I feel much better now. And the mum's going, oh, since they put her on the old Roxacom, that's like a filler in. She's been, you know, she doesn't tick anymore. She is, we can, we can go to the supermarket together and it's just fine. And she's there going, I haven't told anyone. I've not said a, any, a bad thing to anyone since I've been on the medication. And that is a clockwork orange right there. Look at Lars. <laughs> Or the one, the message above you. But fair play, Lars. I know you're only trying to help. No, I'm with you, Alan. But, you know, just put syndrome or just put fucking condition at the end of something. Sensum says, Packer, is it true that God gave women two pairs of lips so that they can... You, uh, there you go, Packer. <laughs> you can... I did already laugh at that, yeah. <laughs> I'll leave that on the screen for other people to judge and know that Mr. Communum is a, a foul person. And it's <laughs> that's the kind of person we don't need in this world. <laughs> Looking after my right. channel. Another one is um, no, why the no. woman. No. No. Well, clean, clean. clean. Oh, it clean. sounds like it. Why do women shut their eyes when they're having sex? They can't fucking stand to see a bloke having a nice time. <laughs> it's quite good. I've got to find this fucking video. Sorry, Packer, take over. Do, do them proud. Get the grift going. Well, what do you want me to what, 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 what? What, 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 what? What sort of sentence is that? Who, the same who doesn't word? want a doctor's excuse to abuse their family? Says Tricky Woo. I don't know what the rest of that comes. That's obviously. Thank you, Sensen, by the way, mate. Very kind, very generous. Always. So obviously you do with someone else. 
Right, how do I find this? Who the fuck sent it to me? Oh, I've got it! I've got it! You know what I had to do? Cheers, Sensum. You know what I had to do, Pack? I had to search my... Um, History? My my chats in um, WhatsApp for Tourette's Syndrome. Now, so a little bit of background on this. Years ago, we had um, John is Not Mad. It was in the 80s. And it, it the next day at school, oh, don't you dare. <laughs> How dare you? The next day at school, everyone was talking about it because there was this young Scottish lad. Something's not happening right with entropy because it's not even showing the normal donations. Hang on, hang on, hang on, people. <laughs> I forgot to tell my community post that I was live. Is this stream still going? You might, Patrick, yes. am I here? <laughs> am I yeah. here? What? Right. So it was oh, in the yeah. 80s. Yeah. Let me know in the chat if you remember. It was about 1984, next day at school, everyone, even people that didn't see it, pretended they did because they'd got enough information. It was about a Scottish bloke. He was about 11 years old. His name was John. And no one had heard of Tourette's syndrome before. <coughs> and uh, he'd walk around the streets with his mum and they'd go, fuck off, to anyone. And then, you know, they'd done really caring and compassionate things like put him in a library, you know, that obviously is quite a difficult place for someone who, who's got this issue where they feel the need to express truths. And they'd be in there just going, shit, can't shit, and then hitting himself and all this. A couple of classic moments where it was, it was like, John, at weekends, John goes to the local youth centre where he works with Harry learning how to um, plant, you know, fuck knows what it's called, horticulture or some shit. And th this John goes, here we go. He said, we just moved that from this uh, pot into that one and he, he spills some of the soil and he goes nah you fucking idiot and that was quite a classic and then he's and, and the bloke just pretends it's not happening and he goes okay why don't you try it he goes boring you big nose cunt right and so when you're 11 this is just gold just gold and it went on at school for years right 15 20 years later they go back to that bloke John is still not mad or something. And he's still got it, but it's not really like it was when he was a struggling child. Now, I, Lord knows what treatment he's had. Lord's no, Lord knows what drugs they got him on. I don't know if they have. But they found some other people who had it. And there were other people in that area. And they, there, was, there's, there was a paper on... on um, an article online that said that there are outbreaks of Tourette's syndrome, outbreaks of a mental illness. So when a couple of when someone gets it in an area, a couple more people get it. And then this girl got it at a school. And then other kids in the school started getting it. Yeah, yeah. And it starts falling apart a little bit, doesn't it? That's a mental illness, is it? So, what are you are you are you catching it? Is it like a virus? Tourette? It's not Tourette's virus, is it? It's a syndrome, and of course, they always say we don't know why this happens, but you know the the mind is a complex thing. No, it isn't. It doesn't exist. It's just a, just an idea. And then in this new one, and I'll try and play the whole clip. John is in this. And he's almost void of it. You wouldn't know he had it. But there's a new kid on the block. He's about eight years old. And the clip is called Funny Cheeky Scottish Kid with Tourette's Swearing and Insulting People. And that's all Tourette's is. Now, there's a clue in this. What what they, what this little clip is? It's obviously come from a larger documentary. They've got the local gathers in because they want to teach. Because all this 
bullshit police, you know, liberal policing. What they should be doing is giving the gathers guns so that they can protect us from the, the, the new threats that we've invited into our nations over the last 15, 20 years. But no, what they do is all this liberal bullshit where they get a, one kid with Tourette's has got three coppers, two social workers and a fucking teacher. What damage is he doing to society? What 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 is the problem here? He's just a mouthy little shit. You know, don't tell me you didn't have kids at your school who would just shout. At, I, I had people in my school who'd punch teachers. I saw a geezer put a fountain pen for a teacher's cheek. The, 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 the teacher just went to him, why are you late? And he went, Ugh. You know, the kids are like that. Not all of them, because kids are different. There was a little I... black girl called Amanda when I was in junior school, and she got she just lost her rag constantly. Got up and threw a chair at the teacher once. There you go. We had all of that, and it was you know that's just behaviour because kids, you know, we're all different, and we express ourselves in different ways. Now, there's a bit in this video, so they've got. I mean, look at. Look at the attention the kid's getting. For a syndrome, for a mental illness, he gets to say what he wants to the teachers, to the police, to his parents. I mean, who didn't want to do that as a kid? Who didn't want to say to their teacher when the teacher said, you're gonna, you're doing four hours of detention? How about you fuck off, big no cunt? Everyone wanted to say that. This this syndrome, which is in the DSM five, oh, it's a problem. Key bono, who benefits him? He gets loads of attention, which kids are desperate for. All kids, he gets to say things to the police, and trust me, you'll see him saying it. And he's getting so much money spent on him for what? What? What's the difference if he stops swearing at people? You know, he, he, it's just absurd. It's, it's insane. Now, there's one little giveaway right in it where he, someone says, so the police, you can tell that the police just think, fuck this nonsense, but they've got to play along because it's, you know, the, 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 the long march through the institutions has totally overtaken uh, the police force. And so you can see the coppers aren't buying it, but they're having to play along, go, okay, yeah, yeah. And they don't respond to what he says. Uh, and there's a, there's a, well, I'll play it because there's a couple of things I want to say about it. But at one point, the kid, who's about 11, I guess, he says, I can get away with fucking murder because he knows that's it. He's been diagnosed. You're mental. You've got a mental illness. What is that? Well, you you say you say awful things to people. I mean, remember South Park when he he has it, doesn't he? He pretends to have it. What's his name, Packer? The the what? Cartman. The yeah, Cartman pretends to have Tourette's disease syndrome. Sorry, but through simulating it, he ends up getting it, which is more. That's probably more likely what happens. I'd, I'd put more money on that than I would any other of this DSM bullshit. So let's have a look at this. Don't forget, people, if the channel gets yeeted, it will go black and it will say this channel has had a content match, but in three minutes the channel, the stream starts again here. I won't play all of it in one go because I want to comment on it and it mitigates the chances of me getting yeeted. So... If you could let me know that you could hear it, well, I'll play as much of it as I can in one go, but listen, listen, don't just listen to him doing all his weird shit. Actually try and analyse when and where he says things, what he's saying and who benefits, because that's the giveaway. Oh, why do they keep changing this? Right, here we go. Do it right, could you hear that? Packer? I could. I right, could I'll, hear it, yeah. Well, that'll do. So that bloke on the screen now, that's John from Johnny's Not Mad and Johnny's Still Not Mad from 10 years later. Fuck me, it's nearly 20 to 4 in the morning. How long have I been at it? Hour and a half, all right. 
Uh, so, but he's barely got it now because he's managed to he's managed to get attention now by being a spokesman for Tourette's. So he doesn't need to do all the other stuff. He's 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 getting his needs, his basic fundamental need for human connection out of being the bloke who used to have Tourette's syndrome and who's kind of got it under control. Because that's all he was trying to do anyway. He wanted some basic human connection. And when and when you saw him at his family, that geezer John at his family, the dad just ignored him. You know, there was no, and the mother was terrified of the father. You got the idea that there was some kind of abuse going on behind the scenes. I can't say that for sure, but you know, there's red flags akimbo. But anyway, let's check out this little teenager. Here we go. His mum. Right, right, right. Right, right, right. I've never met you before, so I'll introduce myself and just do a wee round of introductions if yeah, you want. So yeah. I'm... Where did your eyebrows go? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm Gina Dixon. I'm the locality officer for the school. Right, so did you hear that? So the kid says, where did your eyebrows go? Because she's plucked her eyebrows. Now, I'd imagine most kids his age would notice that she's plucked her eyebrows and would probably quite like to say something like, what the fuck have you done to your eyebrows? <laughs> you know, I'm like that when I'm on acid. But they've learned they've learned certain ways of being, and this child hasn't. But what kind of syndrome does everyone laugh at? They all just laughed. They all just laughed at him. Oh, he's having a terrible time, this kid. He's like a fucking comedian. Must be awful just to spend your day saying exactly what you think and have everyone laugh at you. Listen to the way he talks to the gathers in a minute. So, so I work quite closely with Gemma, um, and we thought it'd be a good idea to obviously meet Rory. Right, that's well, I'm Tom Quinn, I'm the community sergeant. Uh, I work with Gina, and that just means I can tell the rest of my community officers so we can. Did you hear him go, that's fascinating, isn't it? <laughs> he even knows. I'll play that bit again. You it, Listen to him. He even does it in that crappy little liberal voice. That's fascinating, isn't it? So, I mean, look how many people are in there. Two gathers, a social worker, uh, his teacher. This social worker, she, 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 she uh, exposes the whole charade in a minute. Anyway, here we go. I can tell the rest of my community officers so we can look out and speak to Rory. Rory. Oh, well, I'm Tom Quinn. I'm the community bit. sergeant. Uh, I work with Gina. And that just means I can tell the rest of my community officers so we can look out and speak to Rory in the street. Aren't you wankers? I'm Rory and I'm a wankster. Previously, when I... On a daily basis, apart from the swearing, what kind of things... Why don't you... Yeah. I might accidentally wank someone off. Of it's about people becoming so aware of him. Yeah. So what? What are they doing here? What's what? Is, this is policing. This this is the police. Your tax money, my tax money, is paying. And I'll tell you what, this clinical psychiatrist is probably on about three hundred quid an hour. Fuck knows how much the coppers are getting. But what are we getting out of this? I, I, what what's anyone? What is it? It's just absurd. Now look, I know Tourette's doesn't reflect all mental, so-called mental illnesses. But what it does do is show you the the bait, the, the the sort of process of how we swallow this bullshit. Yeah. In his community, everything that we are doing in terms of through school is about educating the people in the school, but also the, the place that he lives in. You know, and, and yeah. he, there's stress. So mm -hmm. the moment that happens, we see more ticks. Mm -hmm. But it's just about, and the other thing that's really important is Rory's ticks are quite suggestible. So if we talk about certain things, wank, wank, he'll wank. start ticking those things. Ticking if, we talk, those things. if we talk about John, he may. Tick Johnny John Davidson! Ticks. So when he's in the community, you, you. if people are saying to him, go and do this, go and do that. You know, it's yes. quite likely that his yeah. text will answer that. There you go. No agency, no responsibility. If people tell him to do things, there's a chance his ticks will answer that. Explain that to me. Explain what kind of illness. Well, you know what, Moody Edge? Exactly. 
Exactly. And if I was an 11 year old kid sitting there and looking at all those other munters and that absolute salt is there giving me attention, I would be thinking, oh God, I want to fuck you because that's what young boys think. He can say it. He just says it and, he, and, he, and he'll continue to. You didn't have any control over these ticks no. either. Ba, 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 ba. Right, this is crucial. So I can't remember whether the old deer asks, but listen to what the shrink says. He, I think that's his grandmother or his mother. I can't remember. But she says something like, he doesn't have any control over his tics. And then the shrink tries to answer it. And this is where it all falls apart. This is behavioural, not pathological. Of course he, of course he has... Uh, he, he's choosing to do it. He's choosing to do it. Now, there might be a little bit of uh, regret. There might be a little bit of pain. There might be a little bit of uh, shame. But he's still choosing to do it. You know, watch this. It, 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 it blows the lid off the whole bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Text answer that. But you didn't have any control over these texts no. either. That's it's just... That's what people yes, don't understand. Thinking. So it is alarming. It it can offend quite a lot of people. With Tourette's, people say, well, what, what can I expect? From Spit it out, John, your wank face. Expect the unexpected. Mm -hmm. If it sounds really vulgar, it's going to be a tick. It's you actually know. the last thing that you want. That they Fuck have the police! Them looking... Yeah. Or they'll pick up on a fat bastard, fat bastard, fat bastard, for something that somebody's bastard, sensitive about, fat bastard, fat bastard. and it'll come out. They don't want it to, yeah. but fat it will bastard, come out. And then who is this woman who's diagnosing Tourette syndrome just off the back of her hand? Exactly, Pizzle. Exactly. And you know, again, I'm not saying he's not suffering. I'm not saying that, but this. I think that might be this might be his grandmother. I mean, I haven't seen the whole documentary, but how the hell she knows all this? I, I haven't got a clue. She wants it to be the case. She wants it to be that there's no, there's no, uh, he's got no agency, no responsibility, which is patently the opposite of the truth. That's what is Bastard. That's a suggestive part. Yeah. When you see the police, how do you, when you see us, what do you think? Oh, oh fuck, don't arrest me. I promise it wasn't me. Yeah. I didn't do anything wrong. It's also good for Rory's confidence. And did you see that copper just not buying it? Look, watch <laughs> his face. Look, hang on. Fuck, don't arrest me. I promise it wasn't me. I didn't do anything wrong. It's also good for Rory's confidence and his, you know, different anxieties he has being out in the community to know that he's got the support. That's John, who's got Tourette's. Doesn't seem to have. Support of the police. And that you guys have got the support. I can get away with murder. School as well. And there it is. Did you hear that? Right in the middle when John, and John's been brainwashed by the media and all these psychiatrists all his life, poor bloke, they've done him more damage than good without doubt. And you hear the kid, I can get away with murder. I mean, that's not a tick. What, are you telling me you're an illness told you to say that? A mental illness? No, he just, he just says it as it is. I can get away with murder. You know, different anxieties he has being out in the community to know that he's got the support of the police and that you guys have got the support. I can get dad away with murder. School as well, and it's about it's about working as a team. There you go. That, that, that's it. It's absolutely. It's just a nonsense. It's just an absolute nonsense. Did I already say about the school where this girl does a documentary about her Tourette's? Right. <clears throat> and as she's doing her documentary, and it's, it was with the BBC or Channel 4, some sort of like so-called big uh, news outlet or production company, whatever you want to call them, media. And obviously, if you're at that school, 
you know that that girl, and we all know what teenage girls are like, especially to each other and their little cliques and their groups, you suddenly think, hang on, hang on, I, I, I was in the school play. That was, I got quite a lot of attention from that. But she's doing a documentary of the BBC. Hang on, this is a bit much. And while she's making the documentary, about halfway through, she says to the camera, she says, something really strange is happening. There's, an out, there's been an outbreak of Tourette's at my school. There's about 14 other girls who've now got Tourette's syndrome. Now, at that point, you would expect the documentary to look into the, I don't know, one in a zillion chance that maybe it's a social, cultural, behavioural thing rather than a mental illness because they've all just caught it. They want a bit of the action. They want to get on the TV show. They want her to interview them. So they're going to just Tourette's it up to the max. But she doesn't. She doesn't investigate that. She just talks to more experts who say it's a very complex phenomenon. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Absolute, absolutely ridiculous. I just want you to see the uh, psychiatrist try and sell her a bit here. And again, watch them all laughing at this illness, this mental illness. It's just a joke. They're all laughing. <laughs> Here we go. Doing this is about the police knowing him, but also he needs to make the right choices in the community. Yes. You know, and, and it's just about reinforcing that for him as well. Yes. So and we can't all, move away from the fact that he is 12 and he's... Miss Gilroy doesn't oh, yeah. have any sense of humour. That's why she's laughing at that. She's a fucking hippie <laughs> fuck <face. laughs> Wanks, anyway, <laughs> 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 I'd just like to thank you all for coming in. Rory, can we any questions? Do you know? Have no, you got any? I yeah. didn't. Why have you got so small eyebrows? <laughs> <laughs> have you got any questions about this, Rory? Not really. No. Nope. Have you got any worries about when you're out and about? Don't the arrest me if I rape someone. If you don't get him in the Thank you, Gina. Not a problem. Fucking hell. Yeah, I mean, there you go. There you go. And no one says a word. What did you make of that, Packer? I was almost completely unconvinced by him. Oh, I'm totally un. I mean, he, he's, got, I he's, he's got problems, but it's not, it's not a men mental illness, doesn't exist. There's no mind. Yeah, there's an epidemic of um, non-binary trans nonsense that's happening across the West, but nowhere else in the world. There was that Oddly school enough. in Brighton, wasn't there, where it, it started taking over and uh, it, all, all the autistic kids wanted to be trans all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. It's and gone from one in a that. million to one in five in some places. Yeah, it, the, the school's got something weird like 40% trans uh, kids now. Yeah, but you hit the nail on the head with the other kids seeing it and going, oh, look at the attention, all the attention that one's getting. There you go. That's it. There you go. I mean, really, people, go to uh, LibGen, uh, Library Genesis, search Library Genesis, download the DSM-5. Don't do that because it's illegal. And just have a look at some of the definitions of mental illnesses that are in that book and how you get diagnosed with them, what you've got to do. And just listen to, I talked about this the other night, but it bears repeating because it blows my mind. Opiate use syndrome. Because in my day, that was just called being a junkie. But now it's opiate use syndrome. Okay. And there's, 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 there's things in it that are the most ridiculous things, but what it means is they can sell drugs to these people to shut them down, to just, just turn them into docile, useless bodies where they get up, go to work, come home, have something to eat, go to bed, don't complain, go home, r rinse and repeat. 
It's uh, it's terrifying. <laughs> Pizzle says I've got that. <laughs> <laughs> Right, people, it's nearly four o'clock in the morning. Um, should we get a guest on, Packer? It is a call-in. <laughs> yeah, Barkley and... Oh, pal, Barkley and Pizzle. And Barkley yeah. and Pizzle. Uh, did you say chomping? Chomping at the bit, yeah. Nah, it's not chomping, is it? What is it? Champing. All right. You've learned something, though, haven't you? Yeah, every day's a school day. There you go. P to the I to the Z, Z, L, E. Good call, JP. Shoot on sight, fire at will, shoot to kill. Let's go. We've got Barks and Pizzle coming on. Get, get back. It's the Barks and the Pizzle show. Now look at them, both in the fucking mirror, combing their hair, all that lark. Good Lord. I mean, each of them has got more hair than both of us put together, but Jesus. <laughs> but they've both left because we didn't bring them on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, they, they don't want to come and consume content. Well, this oh, is... I said he wanted to come on. I'm just assuming Barkley does, because... Here he is. Here's the B to the A to the R to the K to the S. There he goes. Oh, okay. Hold on, hold on. Can't hear you. That's all right. I was only taking the piss. Putting in his Alibaba tooth headphones. Can you now? Why is my screen? So I don't want the new layout. I want to be able to fucking see. Whoa, what's going on there? What happened? What? You're right. Is yeah, good? I just can't see anyone. Camera slot. Oh, I can. I can see you, Barkley. You're looking lovely, mate. Oh, thank you. And there's the piz. Hang on, I can't see anyone. I think I might have dodged it up. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Hang on, I've just got... It's really weird. I've just got... Who's got their television on playing something? Oh, yeah, that'll be me. Hang on a minute. I, know it was, but I just cut you some slack. Yeah, sorry. Hang on a minute. I'll just mute for a minute. All right. <laughs> you know they sent Oscar Wilde to prison because there was a little bit of poo left on someone's bed. Fucking hell, man. <laughs> right. Now, now I want... Is Oscar Wilde a singer? Did he do music? He's a writer, oh, isn't he? my God. <laughs> the writer. The writer. You know, Shakespeare, the skateboarder. The um, writer. How are you, Bob? someone with a similar name. Uh, I, I'm doing well. Uh, had a job interview today. This is how I turned up. Cherry red shoes on. This haircut. Shaved freshly for it. Got nice little. Is that my whistle? Top of it. I can't really see. Mm -hmm. I've, I've fucked it all up. Hey, whistle. I'm going to say yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah man. You want to see these boots, Pizzle? Have you seen these boots? Can you? Have you got? They're all right. Now? Okay. Oh, I, I can't even hear you. Oh, I can't oh, hear you. Let, let, let me just do you. Oh, oh fuck's oh, sake. Oh, oh, Hang on a minute. Just, just, stre just stretching it up there. It's not really letting us see the boot, <laughs> oh, though, is it? Oh, let, let's, let's have a look. Get... Foster and Sons. Look at there, man. Good Lord. You know, they were Jackie's... Simultaneously look fuck like it a out. And a penis. It's amazing. Jackie's favourite boots. Can you hear us, Pizzle? I will be when I first saw her. Pizzle, he's gone, look. Look, you see, that's what opioid use disorder does to you. <laughs> um, people, it's four o'clock in the morning on a Thursday night. Can you please get set the grift on fire, please? Thank you. you uh, I, will, I, I will stay on a bit longer, like a brass. One, two, one, two, Pizzle, do you read me? Over. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Am I echoing or anything? No. All right, good. All right, cheers. Look, Toffee says, for fuck's sake, Pizzle, you've had two hours to get your shit together. <laughs> it, can be, it, it can be difficult, though, sometimes. I mean, no. I, I dream... Go on, go on, Pizzle, you answer. What it is, I'm, I'm on my phone. I've got no uh, internet in this new place I'm in. So I'm doing it all on my phone, and I'm not really used to that. I'm used to doing it on the laptop. See what I mean? Pizzle, are you wearing some kind of sports jacket? Just like a <laughs> gangster. Yeah, this is a 
guess how much this is like my old school Puma tracksuit top. I know I've been going on about tracky tops and that, but guess how much this was? What you it's bought it new? No, seven and six. Oh. One pound. <laughs> one pound. One pound. One pound. Yeah, and it's cool as fuck. It is it's cool a, as fuck. It is. It is. Very for, nice. It is. It is for one pound at a charity shop. I know a bird who works in a charity shop. Very sexy. Very yeah. sexy. All the ones who I work in minor months and severely morbidly obese. Yeah, they're generally about 98 years old in charity shops, aren't they? Uh, this I one's under the ones under under the the stone. I don't yes, know if you've seen, um, you've seen my uh, my uh, posts on uh, Lifeboat recently about the clothes and that. I don't know if you've seen that. I, I don't spend a lot of time on the Lifeboat. It always seems to be people arguing with each other about being gay. Yeah, well, I posted a lot of uh, stuff about uh, you know, clothes and that about cool clothes, and I get called gay a lot because it's not yeah. sportswear. I mean, I know I'm wearing sportswear now, so it's sort of it doesn't really help me point, but you know, <laughs> Europeans shouldn't be wearing sportswear, in my opinion. You know, amen. Yeah, I, amen. Nice one, I'm bye. with you on that. I'm, a, I'm fully with you on that, as you know, I've said it before. Uh, Glass reckons you chored that from a charity shop. <laughs> the, the pound was what you put in the little red box to distract the old deer while you bagged it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I've got this one here. I did rob this one from a charity shop. I don't think it's yeah, a nice. Uh... All right, I robbed this one, yeah. I robbed it from a charity shop. Only because I've spent so fucking much money in that charity shop, and they rip, they rip me off every time. So, so I, I, I pinched this one. It's a nice, it's a pretty green tracksuit top. It's, on, it's really on, nice. Wait, wait, wait. How did the charity shop rip you off? Because they charge so fucking much, right? There was this, there was this <laughs> uh, jacket. It was um, oh, what was it? It was this make anyway. It's a Chinese make. It's it's shit. And it, they were like charging forty quid for this jacket, and it was like, it was like fifty quid brand new, and they wanted forty quid for it second hand. Can you but, believe that? But Pizzle, are they only ripping you off if you make the purchase? Well, exactly, yeah. But well, I've made a lot of purchases. So is I that their fault or yours? Mm. Yeah, I know where you're coming from. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, not position, it's just a little bit of logic that came. No, that's, fair. that's fair enough, but most charity shops, I mean, the best one is uh, Bernardo's. That's a really good charity shop. They don't they don't rip you off there. But uh, a lot of them, they go online, see how much these clothes are, and they'll charge you like 80% of the brand new price. You see what I'm saying? Pizzo, I reckon you should do a blog and you should travel to different towns. It should be a blog of reviewing charity shops in different towns. No, nah, I'm doing a YouTube world. channel. You're doing a YouTube channel? What, on charity shops? Well, on on, 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 a, on, on style on a budget, basically. Style on a budget. Sorry. He's going to go around charity shops. <laughs> so it is a blog about charity shops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. You're not going to do anything. I'll just go to the charity shops anything. in the welfare areas or ones that are kind of like near sort of upper class estates and stuff like I that. I was just uh, about right. you, there's, there's no upper class estates, mate. You've got that mixed up a bit. There's areas. a charity shop just near, um, I can't remember what square it is, one of the big squares in, just near Mayfair. And you can go into the Oxfam there and you can pick up some fucking cracking schmutter. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's right. cool, isn't it? Yeah, because these people are like Barclay. I know what Barclay was saying, really, obviously. But these yeah, are yeah. people who are throwing away their two grand handmade shoes and the charity shop wants like a fiver for them. I yeah, exactly. It. Yeah. So are you going to do – is that – you are going to do a YouTube channel about style on a budget? I am, yeah. I just need to get all the equipment and that, you know, decent camera and, you know, all that and learn how to do it. <laughs> but, I've yeah, a, I'm – I'm definitely doing it. And uh, I've got a second-hand blue Yeti. One owner, eight years old. Some oh, mold, yeah. some mold. Um, doesn't work occasionally when recording videos. Right, I tell you, we have got Chris. You've got some nice boots that you, that you said you was going to give me. 
Remember, I did a girlfriend give me the no no. Look at I that. Know, yeah. I'm only pissing I'm, about. Would you like to see him again? <laughs> <laughs> Ludwig saved the day and actually did. He said, Nice bit of scrubbage for a Wednesday, obviously descending into chaos. Cheers, all much love. Thank you, Ludwig. Much Arno could push an Arta Tutu. Just oh, on the uh, <coughs> Blue Yeti thing, didn't you send a Blue Yeti to Chris Mitchell at one point? I bought him a new microphone, yes. Oh, yeah. I was, was going to say, it's sitting up on uh, my wardrobe right there. It got passed down to me. The amount of things I've got secondhand off of Chris is amazing. Well, you know, I just thought he, he was putting a lot of work in, but you could never hear him. So I bought him a mic. <laughs> Yeah, very generous I don't talk of you. To him too much these days. He, he, I don't. It's, I think he's struggling somewhere. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he's not. But I, I, I chat to him on occasion. He's doing all right. I should you admit that publicly. Him on? Hmm? Did you say you jacked him on? So I chat with him. <laughs> it chats with him. He, he doesn't say. He jacks him off on occasion. Yeah. <laughs> it was so close. No, he, yeah, he chats with him. Yeah. That's fair enough, Barkley. So, Pizzle, in the chat, you've said, hang on a minute, sorry, JP said, I'd watch that Pizzle, best bargain versus worst tap. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that means. Oh, I'll, I'll, a, I'll, I'll, I'll take you as a compliment. We, we yeah, I'll watch it. Like the same I'll watch it, I'll the same I'm on board with that. We've got to try to get the best outfits from different charity shops or something like that. I've got to compete. Oh, you're going to set one. You're ripping off Pizzle's idea, are you, Barkley? I always rip off people's ideas. That's Thank bad. you, JP. Thank you. Anything. Now, Go on. Go on, Pizzle, in the chat, in the chat, you've 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 suggested today that you might be using. Yeah, I wasn't that, suggesting it. I said it. <laughs> it wasn't. Or not? Oh. We don't need to. We don't need to. You can just say no. gone sideways for him, look. <laughs> That's very good. He doesn't know either. <laughs> Is he frozen? Does he yeah, know? I think, yeah. I think he's left the chat. I hope I didn't offend him. He did say it. Blog says he's on about boots again. Oi, Blogs, I'm on about entropy again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See how I do it, Barkley? You know, Chris, if I, get, if I get this job, I'll, I'll consider doing I might even become a member. I've been thinking. I've been thinking about it as soon as the members think about it. I was like, maybe I'll become a member for Chris's channel. Never did it. It's the best. This the most. Like Twenty quid over time. It's the most exclusive members stream ever. You know, you you get about one member stream every three years, <laughs> and that's it. Good stuff. Oh, I hope I didn't push him over the edge or something. He did say in the chat that he was using. No, and he did just confirm it before he went. He went. I didn't suggest it. I am. And he probably he lost went. connection or something. He might be, might be regretting it now, though. Uh, well, okay, we'll see. Hello, Sergeant Steele. Who's this pizzle dickhead? He's the one who paid the money when they told him the price, and somehow he got ripped off. Yeah, I did. I did call him on that. It was an twice. Toffee says, buy me a mic if you want, Dange. I'm, I sound like I'm shouting into a bucket on streams. Toffee, I only buy one mic per lifetime, I'm afraid, and that box has been ticked. Although there are a few other things on the list that I will buy someone once. The thing is, you don't get to see the list. So only <laughs> if, I, if I observe someone in need of the thing that is the things that remain on the list, uh, will I purchase it for them? Do you get one if you but, guess it? If you guess one correctly? Yeah. Oh, you get it if you need it. Oh, go on then. Have a guess. Well, Cracker, there's no list, is there? So, you know. <laughs> uh, Barkley, you're really small in the in the, in the the in the shot. Why don't you come? Yeah, come you need a bigger head. Because like I have to <laughs> move. Where I'm sitting. There we How go. did you do that? How magic. did you do that? Oh, Matt, it was magic, was it? I can do that. Look him there, look. That's that's how it should be. Yeah, but you've just moved your head. The camera. I can do that. Look. Whoa. Oh. I've got oh. a. Uh, it's because I've got an Elgato camera, which has its own, like sort of software you can use for it. Where I can do all sorts of things. I could be a uh, being black and white if I wanted. It's all sorts of magic on it. I should turn down the contrast. It wasn't some special filter. 
Um, Barkley, I've noticed that you you you're not speaking as fast. As, I reckon Pizzle's battery run out. I'm hoping so. I've noticed you're not talking as fast as you used to. That's a lovely thing. I want to before you answer that. that. Before you answer that, I just want to thank. I want to thank um, Ludwig because I did I did point out the time and I said this will be nice. And Ludwig come through, JP come through, Leon scared, Leon scared, sorry, Leon. Leon squared come through. And he said, Barclay reminds me of Steer Pike out of Gormengast. I should start writing all these people that I apparently look like down and start listening to their music. It's always you look like uh, you look like X from Y band is usually what I always hear. Hang on, I'm just finding a picture. I don't know Storm, I don't know who that is. I'm just finding a picture for us. Barclay's dropped one in, Chris. Yeah, no, I'm, I haven't got. I, I'm nearly. I've seen those. I think it's just the air, Barclay. Okay, it's his boy um, band air. You've got there, Barclay. I'm sorry. And then I've dropped twenty big ones. Good luck with you. You. He's not here. I think. I hope he's all right. Good he's luck with your YouTube channel, R Pizzle. I need to up my style game. Music recommendations for Barclay. Yes. Yes, album. And close to the edge. I, I don't and know. I'd like to counter that with nothing by yes. <laughs> yes, all right. Uh, I'm I not listening. To, I've listened to a little bit of him, but the uh, the two Barclay, songs I know. Barclay, about, yeah. when you put twenty euros down, you'll get the attention. But for the minute, it's art close. Art close. Thank you very much, man. I will pass your. I didn't know what I meant when I said thank you very much. I will pass your uh, comment on to Pizzle. Um, and uh, I've just passed your musical. Uh, um, we, I suppose we could call them recommendations. It could be, it could be like a, a <coughs> sly sort of. You might, he might be trying to fuck you up a bit there, Barkley. If you know what I mean. Oh, El, wants thank to you, really Fally, Yes. Eleanor's drop. No, I will get to yes in a minute. Am I a member for this two years? Am I the member for this two or three years? You are Lucky. the one. Eleanor, have you been? Are you on the gin, love? Am I the member for this two or three years? Lucky you. I love you. Really Eleanor. Changed her name, haven't she? I can't help. I can't help you. I don't know what it means, but I'm going to say yes because yes is like more positive than no, isn't it? Generally, and Crow has joined the firm. Thank you, Crow. Amazing, amazing. I love, I love it. It's great. Thank you, people. That's very kind of you. I mean, it's fair enough that I'm up at four o'clock in the morning. Pizzle, why are you not on here? Because he wants to link again. Oh, okay. He says it's too far up. That's what he means. I thought he meant his colon. <laughs> that was a tab, sadly. Here you go. There you go, Pizzle. Sorry, mate. John's the small... Barclay is a, lo a lovely sounding name with unfortunate associations. Well, it's not his name, is it? <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be all right. Had everyone convinced of that one. What name could you I have of him? Blogs. Blogs is moving in on Eleanor. We've got a love interest going on. Look at Blogs. Blogs has left a super chat. Uh, Pizzle. Yeah. Do you want to move on from that? Probably well, better. No, no, go on. Go on. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I'm using gear again. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so uh, uh, how's that? How's it? What, what's your thoughts about that? You know I've got not absolutely no judgments on you. If I know you, you haven't. Drugs, use drugs. That's it's your choice. Yeah, no, I started to use a little bit because I was going through a bit of a, a bad time. And so you know how it is. I, I used a little bit, and that came to be more than a little bit. And then I got sort of into it again. But, you know, I, I, I will be able to kick it again, you know, shortly. My life has, recently, my life has uh, improved immeasurably. So, you know, I'll... Uh, Are you, I mean, I will put this to you. Because I know that story all over. You think, oh, I'll just have a bag. And it's fucking bliss, man. When you haven't had any for years, that first yeah. bag, you're like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. 
you know. And all that oh. stress and trauma just lifts off you. To but tell you the truth, night. Chris. Okay. The, that was the the reason the, the actual the actual reason I went into rehab in the first place is I thought if I could get clean, then I could have a really good hit. That was that was my main reason for getting clean. Yeah. I know you know what, what I'm saying. Mean. But yeah. then when I got then when I got clean, it was awesome, and it was good for a few years. I was absolutely totally clean for a few years. Yeah, and then you speak uh, very highly of your time in treatment. You say you loved it, didn't you? You loved. Oh, I did love it. Yeah. No, I, I did. I loved it. Yeah. Uh, I made some good friends in there. No, likewise, uh, likewise. So, uh, so yeah. Anyway, it, it went tits up for a little bit, and then. No. So so I, got, I started you I started using again, but you know things are back on track now. So no, I'll be able to kick it no problem. I can, I can kick it no problem. So the question. Yeah. So I'm not trying to catch you out. I mean I know it always sounds like it, and I'm not. But oh, yeah. so yeah, if, cool. if you if you you're so you're talking about. I assume you're going to do a, just a, you're going to rattle it. So you're doing what like a bag or two a day. You could probably rattle it at home is that what you're thinking yeah well don't even have to rattle it no last time i got clean i got clean without rattling all you've got to do is is cut down your as long as you can stay away from the gears cut down your meths very slowly and you and you can you can get away without doing a proper rattle i mean it's, it's, okay. it's not pleasant but it's not a full rattle you know what i mean all right okay so for people who don't know rattling just means withdrawing um so are you, if you could press a button now and not yeah. have a habit, would oh, yeah. you? Yeah, 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 right, yeah, so yeah. This, so this is where I'm leading to. So why don't you do that? Why aren't you stopping now? Why aren't you why aren't you tomorrow gonna start the process of that get clean easily like you said you can? Yeah. Yeah, I know it sounds a bit uh well, I've just moved into this place. Uh, it's an house. I'm sharing the house with with a friend. Uh, basically, he's a junkie. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, that don't make That's it easy. To have in your current I knew. I knew he was Pizzle. No, I knew that. but oh, I did know that. <laughs> I don't. I, really, I don't. I don't know what to say, Chris. I've really not got an answer for that. Uh, I've not got an answer for that. As soon as, as, soon as I start cutting down on my meths, which I've got a... Uh... You're on a script, are you? Me you're talking yeah. about methadone. So how yeah, much a day of that are you on? 50 mil a day. Uh, so 50 mil meth, two bags. Any crack? No, 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 no. Any crack? Uh, no, I can, I can... Once I put my mind to it, which, which I will do, you know, I'll cut. I'll cut down. I'll, I'll cut that in half. I'll just cut that in half straight away. I'll but, go to 20, 25, 25 mil a day. Pizzle, you do. I think you would agree with me that people who are opiate dependent have said, "I could stop tomorrow if I put yeah, my mind to it." I know. And I then know. ten years later, I know. I they're, know Chris, still, right. they're still saying that. I'm not yeah, judging yeah. you because I, I think. Not. I think you're, right. you're, you're choosing to use it because you want to. You're right. I, yeah. I think it's ridiculous that we live in a society where that could threaten your employment. It could threaten your freedom. It it means you have to uh, maybe deal with some people you'd rather not well, have to. It, on Monday. It, oh, hang on a minute. Sorry. Let me just, let me just finish yeah. this. And yet, and yet there's three other people in this stream who can go and drink beer whenever they want and like do you know what i mean they can choose to use their drug of choice and yet yeah. you you you've got a load of all sorts of complications with no yours <laughs> yeah well the thing is on, on, on monday chris monday just gone the other day i was supposed to be starting a new job so i turned up there at seven in the morning <laughs> and they said right we've just got to do a drug test and then and then you right to go wow i said all oh, right i said uh i said it won't come up clean i said there'll be methadone in in, in the drug test and they said all oh, right well we can't employ you sorry so yeah, no, I, 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 yeah. that's a go 
weirdly, if I had, if I was employing someone at my business and they were opiate dependent, I probably wouldn't employ them. Not yeah, because, fair. not for because. You know, I know that all junkies aren't all junkies. There's very high functioning junkies and all sorts, but it's just too much added asshole. It could cause problems, you know, whereas yeah, yeah. I, I can sort of understand why an employer just wouldn't take that extra risk. Yeah. Well, when I, when I, I took this job and when I was reading about it, they did say that they do uh, random, randomised drug tests and what have you. So I thought, well, whatever, I'll get away with it for a few months and make some money or whatever. But they didn't say anything about uh, a drug test on your first day. No, that, <laughs> so that's probably right, isn't it? That's probably yeah. So I, I turned up there at 7 o'clock in the morning, you know, that, they give me my uniform and that. And, uh, Got it. Got so it. Said, right, we'll just, do this, we'll just do this drug test and you're right to go. So I actually, you started you know, undoing your buttons, you might as well have this back, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was basically it yeah you know 100 years ago maybe a little bit longer you could could go into any chemist and and get yourself some opium no dramas and carry on with your life and no one would give a shit it's bizarre really isn't it and it's it's interesting that alcohol and nicotine which are are actually poisonous you know um You can grow them in in America, and you can grow them in uh, a lot of Western countries. Yet, um, opium poppies will only grow in certain areas, like the Golden Triangle in Afghanistan. It's it's, it's weird how that those legal lines are drawn. <laughs> it's almost like it's yeah. geographic. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we we know the story. Uh, did you watch the video I made today by any chance? I don't know if any any of you saw it. People in the chat, if you saw I it, saw let it. me know. Arklo, oh, let me know about uh, Arklo. Thanks for that donation as well, mate. I don't think I thanked you in the end. So um, there, the, I'll, I'll do the quick version. But if you if you didn't see it, go and check it out. So the dark, the dark web and dark web marketplaces where you can buy all sorts of things you're not meant to be able to buy using cryptocurrencies, usually Bitcoin. Um, years ago, there was a, an exit scam. And it's where the people who run the market suddenly shut the market down and all the Bitcoin that are in there uh, that are held in escrow or held in a vendor account or a buyer's account, they run off of them usually taking about 50 to estimated $150 million with them. And after that first exit scam, all the other markets, most people expected it to happen at some point. You know, you use the market. At some point, they're going to shut it down and run off of all the money. You might get a year out of it. You might get two years. But, you know, people get greedy. In fairness, Alpha Bay, Dream and Agora didn't. They warned everyone that, we're going to close in three weeks so get your money out buy what you need and then find somewhere else but in incognito market which was live till two weeks ago they done an exit scam so they run off of everyone's money and then they put up on their website um oh you thought you'd heard the last from us well you haven't because uh, <coughs> we've got a, a nasty little treat for you <coughs> we told you that um, we told you that we were automatically encrypting your messages. So when you when you send a message to a vendor, they need your name and address to send whatever you buy off them to, obviously. But there's you can usually encrypt it with a personal key, but in incognito market said they do it for you automatically, and loads of people bought that. And now what in, incognito market are doing are saying we've got half a million addresses and names and half a million half a million wallet identifiers unless you pay us we're going to dump them all on the internet and so they and then they say in big letters yes this is extortion and it's just okay. a, <laughs> yeah, it's just a mad new low but this is what i say in the video i don't think they realize the sort of people who use those markets Because it's not just people buying bags of gear or a a quarter of weed. I've seen deals on there for like 10 kilos of smack, 
50 kilos of cocaine. You know, a kilo of cocaine at the moment, decent, you're looking at about 40, 45,000 pounds, not dollars. Yeah. So 10 of them is a fair wedge. These are global drug cartels. They're using online markets because it takes half the people out the chain. It means the Royal Mail and USPS do the smuggling. Lovely, lovely. And those people have got contacts in the FBI, the CIA. Of course they have. They always have done. Um, I think these people at incognito market are going to find themselves strung up by their legs, having quite a nasty time in a few months. Of course they're going to find them. I think they're really playing with fire doing that. You know, you, you might be one of those, like one of those big Colombian families who's just lost, I don't know, 500 grand plus a load of regular custom. It's really done, it's put a dent in your business and you're being taken the piss out of, yes, this is extortion. We're going <laughs> to, they don't give a shit about having their I wouldn't names. be reappearing to antagonize them. I would be no. doing my fucking level best to disappear off the face it, of the fucking earth. Exactly. <laughs> and there's yeah, yeah, there's yeah. precedent here, Packer, because people who've done exit scams, people who run uh, online marketplaces, have been found later, you know, like a year later. The FBI yeah, yeah. have found them. Other people have found them. And if the FBI can find them, trust me, uh, the the Colombian, Bolivian, and Venezuelan and Peruvian cartels, who are probably better funded than the FBI, they can find them. Exactly. And I've been 100%. chasing the country. Yeah. I've been chased around the country over about eighty thousand pounds, and trust me, <coughs> it would be fun yeah. to have those people after you. And then no. they'll go for your family because they're going to make an example of you. Don't fuck us. Don't you dare fuck with us. And that you're, and they'll take your family out first so that you see that you've done all that. Oh man, I think they're. I've been chased around for 50 fucking quid. <laughs> They're my <mine> fucking <laughs> thousands of pounds. Shit. <laughs> oh, I'm serious? Nuts. I remember Dark Web just always had quite a mythology to it when I was younger. It was sort of a good source of like horror stories. I used to binge watch as a kid. It was like a Dark Web horror stories five. It'd be like someone talked about getting trafficked into a red room or they would claim they were the ones operating it or they were a hitman. Always some quite fun, wacky stories on there. He used to watch uh, a guy called Some Ordinary Gamers or Muthar. He's quite a big YouTuber. He oh, yeah. Sort of, like little deep web exploration videos, which are quite fun. I watched like the third one. I was an OG I mean, on that. My experience of them were they just, you know, if you were dependent or if you wanted to use drugs that were illegal, you could do it. It took all the asshole out of it. It was, it was, it's basically just eBay, but for contraband. You could get like, it, I'll tell you one of the, you, you talk about, Dark web horror stories, Barkley, but one of the fun, not funniest, but interesting, I suppose, st stories isn't anything to do with violence, sex, or drugs. Quite a common thing that you'd find offered on most of them is a lifetime Netflix account for one dollar. Right? Oh, yeah. So you buy it and they they'll send you free free login emails and free passwords. So it's probably someone who works at Netflix or someone who's hacked Netflix and they just send you other people's login details. But the thing is, <laughs> with Netflix, when you log in, you get to see what you've already been watching and all that, don't you? There's like, a, you yeah. know, previously watched, do you want to continue yeah, watching right. this? Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. there's going to be arguments among families because I used to log on and it would say, who do you want to log on as? And it would be like, you could tell who the adults were and the, the avatars for the kids would be like little bunnies and things. And I'd be watching like horror movies and I'd be like their four-year-old son or whatever. <laughs> and you can imagine them sitting them down and going, listen, either someone else is coming in our house and watching this <laughs> adult <laughs> Or you're lying to us, and the kid's going, I have not watched the fucking exorcist on Netflix. <laughs> it's me in Cambodia. And, oh, and, the, and then what, what they do, they complain to Netflix, and Netflix say, Yeah, someone's using your password. And then you just tell the vendor, and then they give you another three passwords. Um, that's presented as fiction, of course. I never done that because it would be illegal. Yeah, of course not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know they're really trying to crack down <laughs> stuff like that now. 
like the police were threatening uh, custodial sentences for people who were getting cracked fire sticks and stuff like that. I don't know what a cracked fire stick is. It's one that's like, um, you know, what you were saying about having like free Netflix. So it'll be a, a fire stick where you can log on and n there's no paywalls. You know, you can watch as much of the UFC. Yeah, but hang on, what's a fire like. stick? Mm. I don't even know what a fire it's a, stick is. It's, uh, it's like the Amazon... Uh, little, little USB thing, isn't it? Little USB you plug into your TV and you get all... You get, oh, you get more right. things to pay for, essentially. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, listen, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot off. All right, Chris. Uh, all right, listen, Barclay you can find email address, Packer, if you ever want to talk, Packer. Sorry, Pizzle, if you want to talk. Um, yeah, absolutely, Chris. I know I appreciate it. Cheers, bro. No worries, man. Look after yourself. Right. Nice of you to come on. Uh, we'll have a P for Pizzle in the chat, please. Ta-da, mate. See you, guys. Nice one, our pal. See you later. Oh, I feel I do feel for him though. We make our choices, but it's a difficult one. That he's probably loving it. He's having a good time. I'm sure. Well, maybe it, it's diff. It's it, it. You know, it's um, it's a difficult one because you can function on gear. You can. And are we talking gear as in coke, or are we talking gear as in heroin? Heroin. In, oh, I thought so. Yeah. I'll tell you something that happens in rehab centers, right? You get you get people all turn up. There's a weird sort of hierarchy in rehabs with smack at the top, then crack, and then everything else. <laughs> and you Why have smack right, at the top because it's got the worst reputation. Oh, you okay. know, people think of someone in the gutter, like with needles hanging out their eyes, going, Lend us a fiver, I'll do a shit in your wife's mouth, and all that sort of thing. So and you'll get people who 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 snort cocaine, and you know if it's if if it's a problem and you can't stop or you need help to stop, you know you, you don't have to pretend you've got a bigger problem than you have. You've got a problem, you need some help. But they start off by talking about cocaine, but once they start hearing some of the stories from the junkies, when new people come in, they start changing it to gear. Because gears, kind of, you know, if you don't stipulate, it could be cocaine, but they they weirdly just want new people to think they are on the smack, and I've seen it happen so many times, and it, it is. I've I've also seen loads of people leave rehab to do heroin because all the stories they heard in rehab made them really tempted. And I've I mean, seen it. I've seen it so many times that I think that rehabs really need to look at that because it's not really why you go to rehab, is it, to get a worse problem? I mean, well, heroin does have almost like a, a mythology around it. Like I, I know I've had a lot of your stories. Obviously, you know, Dangerfield number one fan. Um, but you know, even from the stories you say, you know, you, you've clearly led a more interesting and more fun life than I've had. You know, all these musicians that are on heroin, like uh, the guy from Motley Crue. Uh, the Stranglers making Golden Brown, which makes heroin sound fucking awesome. <laughs> 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 I think he would have tells the story <laughs> well. I think if you read into what he's actually saying, <laughs> I was just thinking that. Time, but like laying in, laying in the road, having shit yourself with your trousers around the ankle. When he tells it, it's hilarious and fun. Yeah. But oh, you just want to be just there. thinking about oh, banging that geezer's missus. Yeah, right yeah, there. there's another one, yeah. I mean, it's you not know, that much fun. Yeah, I can just, I can, I'm sitting here listening, just imagining the smell and thinking, no. Go. Go. I was just me. imagining you passed out at your ex's house, Chris, wondering if she walked past you or not. I, 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 I don't know what that means. So I really well, don't. Know no, what... Well, it's, it's oh a... yeah, outside the front of her house. Yeah. Oh right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you passed yeah. out before there was anyone there, and then you wake back up, and there's a light inside, and cars there. You don't know if it's her and a new man or not. No, but, her yeah. and her husband and her child stepped over me to get into their house while I was asleep in a puddle of my own piss. There's a few needles it? and a few did empty that, tins. Did that definitely happen? Like, did you speak to her afterwards or something? Oh well, yeah, without a doubt. And he said, he said, "Oh, this don't look too good." She went, "It's just my stupid ex-boyfriend ignoring." <laughs> stepped over me. <laughs> walked into their house and carried on with their life. I'd missed the last train home and stayed on. The, yeah. Anyway, um, hang on. I've got this from blogs. I've got to do it because I promised to show entropies and it's only right. 
Right, people, it's half four in the morning. I really do. Why can't you? I've, I've, I've really fucked this up. Discard changes. Right, I've got it back to the normal. You can see that, can't you? Blog says yep. this for three old dollars. Robbing charity shops is a new low. Autistic kids with brain damage would be beg to differ if they were able to. Yeah, but if that's a joke, Bill, okay, it's a joke. But if you're serious, well, that would be the brain damage causing the problems because the brain exists. Tourette's kids look like jokers. Yes, they are. Thiomerosal in jabs you cannot talk about. Well, I oh, won't. Stream's gone. Yeah, hey, I was going to sound the. Uh, said a bad one there, as he. Thank you, Bill. I, 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 I don't know, but it, so, it sounds volatile. It sounds like it's going to get a Wikipedia, uh, Wikipedia article at the bottom of your stream, telling you what to think. Um, I mean, not unlike okay. the, the autism. Hello, Linda. Thing. Hello, Mike. On things Go like on. autism and ADHD, I've thought about it a lot because we've spoken about it quite a lot. And uh, you, you know, when you when you frame things like, oh, if if it's a spectrum, where's it beginning? Where's it end? Is it behavioural? I, I think there's certainly a level of inheritability um and there is obviously going to be a level of um behave a behavioral element to it. i think someone who has spent their whole life on that uh, tiktok from day one of birth pretty much and you know put in front of screens as a kid too much yeah they're going to have adhd and it's going to be imposed yeah, from Barclay, technology Barclay, there's no biological markers what do you mean by biological markers do you, well, mean specific you take genetic? someone who hasn't been diagnosed with autism and take someone who has there's no difference in the brain completely wrong you're completely wrong no i'm not based Absolutely on you not. can tell the difference based on brain scans because it, it uh well i'm, <laughs> I'm talking about, I, I know this is true about adhd but um there's someone called dr <laughs> ames this guy is he's not like some big pharma shill um he has done the most work for adhd he's scanned how do you Othello. know he's done the most work and how do you know it's quality uh, what well, from him doing brain scans? He's one of the only yeah, doctors who yeah, actually, I, instead of, but, but, instead hey, of going, already, oh, oh, you've got these traits, let's get your medication. Uh, yeah, scanning yeah, people's I already, have, comparing I already, life's work. I already talked about this though. If you behave in a certain way for a certain amount of time, your brain changes. That's how yeah. the brain grows. So if you are, if you've got some kind of, let's look at ADHD, if you're not getting enough attention, which is a basic human need your brain will eventually adjust to the to the way you behave because that's how a developing brain grows. But it's also then you can say, in oh, like look. actual cognitive attention and ability to focus. You, 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 I, think, I think you're sort of yeah, missing bro, the, the great word shape. attention there. Do you all remember that? I, I didn't hear you, sorry. Dickie Attenborough he, in The Great Escape. He pretends to, get, he pretends to be mad to get sent home. I do not remember that part of the Great Escape. I must admit. Yeah, he pretends to be mad to get sent home, and, and they and he and he he really pulls it off. And then they get a letter when he's got home, and he's he's in an That's asylum. It. He's, he's mad. mad. <laughs> there you go. And we talked. I talked about that the other day about simulating a bank robbery. Go in with a water pistol, but you'll still get shot. Barkley, why do you um I feel like you want to defend the idea of mental illness, which your is is your right to. It's absolutely your right to. Have you been diagnosed with any? Uh I've never been officially diagnosed. I, I had there was a doctor I had when I was younger who said it's very likely that I have specifically he said ADD, not attention deficit hyperactive, just attention deficit disorder. And um uh Asperger's yeah, but, Bar well, Barclay, but, Barclay. but my mum didn't want to push for a diagnosis. Barclay, how about well, did he diagnose you or not? He said I have it, but he, my mum didn't want so, the diagnosis. So he did diagnose you. He said I had it off the record. Well, that's a diagnose off hang on, what do you mean off the record? What did he come up to you and say off the record? Well, yeah, in if I I I don't can think anyone else is misunderstanding this is what really I'm saying. Sketchy, Chris. That you're is a it, child is... and you're telling me that the doctor said off the record you've got No, but, but the doctor said to my mum that it's it's very likely that I have um uh something akin to Asperger's or a little bit of Asperger's and that I most likely have ADD. Yeah, but Asperger's but my bit, didn't... Asperger's bit has been taken out of the DSM. They've taken really? it out, it doesn't exist anymore. So all those people that were diagnosed with it they're they're all right now because it doesn't exist well i i think that's very sad. i think asperger's is something that's quite 
um, perceivable as something that you can read on people. And, you know, like you say, you know, people are unique. People are uh, obviously going to be different. Everyone's going to be born with a different brain to a degree. But, I mean, I, I can just tell from uh, my own experience, and I, I'm someone who is, you know, I, I dabble with all ideas. I dabble the idea with, uh, oh, sorry, I dabble with the idea of these things not existing. I think about it. I look at evidence. I, I generally try to hear both sides. And from my own experience, I, you know, I feel like I do have it. And I, 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 it's something people what, often pick you up. Have what, you have what? I have something uh, that I guess you might commonly call autism or Asperger's to a, a light degree. No, I, I, think, I think autism and Asperger's, because of 4chan and all that, got a little bit of kind of social cred because of the weaponized autism. Loads of people suddenly had it on YouTube. Everyone was claiming, oh, I've, I've got a little bit of autism. I've got a little bit of Asperger's. But when, your, your doctor told this, this myth you've invented, told you off the record you've got ADD. This myth I've invented. It's what they said. This is, this is yeah, what I'm just making up. No, when you said off the record, there's there's not a well, coherent. Well, that, that's because here. you kept trying to contradict what I was saying. So I just said it in very plain Barclay, terms. Barclay, Barclay, listen. I ask you a simple question: Have you been diagnosed with ADD? And my answer was no, but a doctor had said it. You doctor had said that I had it. So you haven't. That's a diagnosis, Barclay. Not official, when they say you've got it, not on an official it, basis. Not an official have you? Basis. Have I got cancer? Yes. Right. Have you I, got I, cancer? I, no. But you have. I got don't. It. I don't get what you're misunderstanding. You. I just didn't get no, diagnosed, but they said I had it. I'm trying, I'm, you're, look. You have you been diagnosed with ADD? No, but a doctor has said that it's very likely that I have it. Papa, right, I don't believe me? your doctor, Barkley. I, I, I get why your doctor said it because you're a very intense person and you just your brain starts going in one direction and off you fucking go. Listen, I can get why, but that's is, you're still a normal it? functioning human being. There's nothing wrong with you. That's just how you are. I don't go to. I, I know personally. I, I don't think I am a. Close to being normal, or as functional as it might come across. I feel like I've been a lot. Oh, everyone honest, loves so. to be special and different. Well, no, no, but no one's fucking normal. Yeah, Bart, you, you might, you might have noticed that's the only time I've ever gone as far as saying that uh, in public. But um, yeah. the only things I will say is I generally feel like I do have something like ADHD or autism, whether they exist or not. I, I why, exhibit why, that. Why? Why do you? How about this? You? How about you haven't got attention deficit? disorder how about at the time when all that was going on you were attention deficit i mean yeah i understand you what you're saying getting the basic need of a of a young person of a parental attention yeah it's this not is something you said to me before and i thought about it a lot and I, I think you are absolutely right i think it's definitely going to have an element of play in it uh, Jackie said herself, because um, I've had a discussion with it about her, and she said that it, you know, these sorts of things are trauma based and <clears throat> behavioural. You know, there's it's nothing. It drives me. <laughs> it doesn't drive me mad because <laughs> madness would be a mental illness. <laughs> but I see, I you know, I've seen so much of it, and and to me, for me, Barclay, it's the same. As all that fucking Tumblr stuff, people loving all this in their bios, I'm this, I'm that, I've got this, I'm this, I've got that. You know, it's all part of that whole thing. And on the right, it was like Asperger's and, and autism because it, it's got some kind of cultural credibility to it. When all it is, is you were neglected as a child which most children are because that's just the way of the world. It's a struggle, especially for working children or, or in situations where their parents have died. And, and, and you're behaving in a response to that because you developed in a, in a situation that was far from perfect. But, you know, Barclay, you're an intelligent bloke. Those were but... things that were recognised way before my father had died. I I was, was... I'm not necessarily talking about that, but you listen... Are. You Did are. you? <laughs> no, not at all. Because those kinds of things happen when you're like four or five years old, and your father didn't die when you were four or five years old. Listen, can't you see if you were saying to me, 
were you diagnosed? And I was like, no, but I was. You'd be like, what? I, I don't think what I'm saying is something that's um, completely like unfound. I just said a doctor told my mum that I, I think he said like I, I maybe I'm ten percent Asperger's and I have ADD. I might have it. But that was just on his initial observation of you, wasn't it? You didn't do any fucking tests or anything like that. He just had a chat with you for a little while, whatnot, had a look at you, the way you are, and then went, yeah, you might have, yeah, you might be that way. Yeah, but then it's also something that several people, or like people consistently recognise within me. It's something that very often gets picked up on. Oh. People I meet on the street, people I meet anywhere, people I meet at my weddings, it'll be on it. Oh, well, no, well no, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know why you're don't deliberately be. trying to it's like you're deliberately trying to misinterpret what I'm saying. What I'm saying is people in any scenario will occasionally pick up on and ask, oh, oh, do you have autism or something to that effect? I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll if it's convenient to me, I'll play it up as a card. I, you know, right. I, if it works in my favor, you know, if I'm in a job interview or so yeah, I might it bring that I have autism because people think work. if you have autism, you, you're, uh, you're you have an innate intelligent quality and it, it also doesn't work in your favor because it means that you stop taking responsibility because you've been diagnosed you've got this thing and no, you don't let you get away with things it does it yeah. if you were yeah in the sense of you know if you're being a little bit awkward and you're like better than that yeah there's, I've, I've listened to you talk long enough Bartley, to know there's nothing wrong with your brain it works fine you're you're different to a lot of other people but there's nothing wrong with your brain. It's working fine. You, Look at the quiet. difference between me and Packer. I'll, still, I'll talk for three hours non-stop. I'll say ten words. <laughs> doesn't mean I've got fucking endless word syndrome and Packer's got seven word syndrome. People are different. <laughs> you know, yeah, it, it, me, I'm retarded. <laughs> he is a bit thick. Oh, like you know yeah. that that need that you show you exhibited there to to want to have a diagnosis because you're honourable and noble. You didn't want to lie, so you managed to construct this mythology where no, I haven't got a diagnosis, but he did kind of suggest. And now it's got now. There's this other thing you've thrown in that this sort of plucked out the air ten percent. I mean, what did he do? Put put your head on a scale and say, oh, and put the autism counterbalance, and yeah, that's ten percent. Well, I'm I'm not denying that these things are hard to pin down in such a concrete form, but you know, it, it's a rough estimation. Like, oh yeah, he might have something like a, a little bit off. And like I said, like with my own lived experience, I, I, I am someone who does. I've thought about the idea of mental illness not existing, but. I, I just don't buy it, to be honest. I, I do think uh, it does. I think it's overprescribed. I think when people see the, well, like to the mythology of autism, I guess. Yeah, people do play it up very blatantly. Like, I've seen these people like go on about like, oh, stimming. I don't know where the fuck stimming came from. But apparently all, all these autistic people are like, oh, oh guys, oh, 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 I'm stimming. And uh, other than one I saw, like clearly was like had a lot like properly, was barely high functioning autistic. That's the only time I believed it. Yeah, people just tag it on making shit up. I don't believe any woman has autism. Anytime I see a woman with autism, it's like, fuck off, liar. Liar! Why is that? That's interesting. Why is that? Uh, well, I've had one autistic girlfriend, and her what she told me was is that autistic women are different because we learn to socialise. It's like, so what, you were just a bit socially awkward earlier on? I, I, I've tried... I mean, I'm definitely less socially awkward than I used to be, but it's taken ruthless fucking effort to try fix... I still feel like I'm retarded half the time. So, what can you do? I do as well. Everyone I feel exactly does. like that. It's not easy socialising, but you come on. You come on here every time. You're, you you love it. Yeah, we have it. This is one of the uh, retreats that sort of thing. I, I'm not saying I, I I'm scared of um doing things that are like extroverted or anything to that effect. It's just my reading of social cues can be absolutely abysmal at times. Which uh, you could say everyone's can be. Uh, I'd say mine's below average, and one of the other major knocks on anything I do of autism is someone mentioned earlier about sensory issues and stuff like that. Uh, certain fabrics make my teeth hurt. I can't explain it. Yeah, it's but just we all get them. shit like that. Everyone's got those little foibles with certain things. 
I mean, if if your reading of social cues isn't that good, is that a mental illness or is it just maybe not enough experience or not enough practice? I think you it know, can be both. When you're young, it's quite hard to read social situations. <laughs> You know, everyone in that room is having a bit of a problem. When I was like 18, I could not stop talking and performing because I thought if I, as soon as I shut up, I was like, oh, fucking hell, man, everyone's looking at me. They think I'm fucking weird. Oh, fucking hell, how can I get over this? Oh, I know how I can get over this. I'll start telling stories. And I had to do a lot of work on that, but I haven't got any mental problems. It's just who I am. Look at that little weirdo behind Packers. Yeah, I know exactly. That, Everyone's pack got mental that's, problems that's, or no one else. <laughs> pack of conscience, look. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, mate. It's the angel on his shoulder. Hello, you mate. all right? How's the go-karting going? Oh, tell him. You'll have to tell him. third on the leaderboard. Is oh, that good? That's good, is it? Good work. Yeah, good yeah, work. it's hundreds and hundreds of kids. Oh, no it's, way. It's, it's like a, a, an area thing. Yeah, it's, it's in Lincoln. So it's anyone that goes to that track, their time goes on the leaderboard. So are you... Uh, asking... Hundreds and hundreds of kids, he's third. He, last weekend, he jumped from 13th, I think he was, jumped to third. So is he a little bit famous amongst the sort of local go-karting community? Well, they no, must he's be. famous at Gridline. They all love him. Probably because of the amount of money we spend there. But <laughs> do you have to? Do they? Do, do you have to buy like hot dogs and chips up there? Ten or a pop? No, we take him for a Mackey D's if he does well, which is quite a good incentive for him. And a, and a wimpy if he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if he's the short, old... we take him to the gold egg. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember the old wimpy with the tomato-shaped ketchup bottle? I've got one of them bottles. Oh, did you steal it from a, a wimpy? No. You bought it on eBay, didn't I've you? I've also got one of them um, sugar, you know, the round glass sugar things with the tube out, so you get one spoon for each time you tip it. Why? Yeah, that's a good question. Because <laughs> it was there. I don't know. The same reason I've got the squeezy tomato. It, I think it is a thing. A, a lot of working class households do quite like having things from. It's a. Th it is a thing, isn't it? It's a cultural like a thing. Like if, if I showed him the squeezy tomato, he'd be like, "What the fucking hell is that?" About? Yeah. Whereas if I come round, I'd go, "No way." I don't know. Um, Barclay, I'm going to send you a video. Feel free to send me a video of that bloke you were talking about. I'd like to watch that. I'm always yeah. interested. He's Isn't not a he's not a mainstream uh, doctor, but he's not one without credibility, and he's not one who's uh, niche at all. He's in a weird sort of in between position. He's on um, who's that uh, mixed race guy on Dragons Den? You like Stephen Bartlett. Stephen Bartlett, other than the fact he just advertises the shittest products ever, I do, I do like watching Diary of a CEO. Uh, yeah, he, he did an interview with him recently. And things I think they're fact. terrible interviews. I, I think... Um, a lot of them just, are. He oh, trusts oh. everything they say. He, he, oh. he, he interviewed Russell Brand, and the, 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 art, the, the video is called Addicts, something like addicts, addicts know the truth. Yeah, it was yeah something but, like that. But, but thinking, he changes the thumbnails as well. If you if you track him, like because I I, you know, I I just put him on his background noise over him or Chris Williamson. Uh, Modern Wisdom, his one is his one's better. Um, it, you'll see like this, this thumbnail has changed fucking three times now. I swear to God. All right, so number one couples therapist. This is the titty message. Blah blah blah. And the thumbnail says. Men should always with big red blocky text, which for some reason everyone's using the exact same font, the exact same style for now. Oh, but two days ago it said men should always split the bill, men should never pay, and it, it's changing every two seconds. It's really let me tell you what he does because my friend Harry Dry, and you should he all shit, subscribe. He's testing, yeah, he's a B testing. 
he does well more than AB. He usually does about 15 different thumbnails on Facebook and that to see what one gets the most traction, and that's the one he'll use on his YouTube video because that's what he does for a living, isn't it? He's a social media mm. you know, person, so he knows how to do all that. Up. It's just unfortunately um, they, they never have any pushback or any level of a debate on these, and sometimes you get people who are just saying things that are just completely retarded. And the yeah, clickbait not, is just horrific. That that's why I don't really enjoy them because he he tr he he trusts them. He never he never sort of suggests that they might be deceiving him and or themselves. Blogs put this into entropy. <laughs> Cheers, blogs. He really wants your boots. Watch yourself, danger. Sleep with one eye open if he comes round. He's referring to Piz that were my corda vans. I wore them to Super Duper tonight, blogs. Maybe I'll just sleep with them on, just me and my boots. My girlfriend likes that, you know. My girlfriend likes me to... Thanks for that image. She like, Yeah, I'm, that's why I'm going to continue. She likes me to uh, do the do, but with my boots on. <laughs> I've got a big pair of proper, like, romper stomper, skinhead, steel toe cap boots to impress a, a girl once. She'd like them, but never... Um... I never have banged anyone while wearing that's a shame. Another thing on the... Uh, I, I the whole... understand how you feel now, Packer, about the image I gave you. Sorry, I, I had to... Had to now it's a shared experience because everyone's had to feel the same thing. <laughs> Fucking hell. Is, is that what you wear down the boozer? Yeah. pair of blue jeans? Yeah. Nice. Packer walks thinking. into the pub wearing those. Everyone stops. Everything that they're doing, the keyboard stops playing. They all look at him, have a little smirk, and they go back to what they're doing. When I take the wife out, it's them jeans and a shirt and a jacket. Well, what hat. shirt do you wear with them? You don't go double oh. denim, do you? No. Thanks no, I wear a nice you. shirt. Like like um like top gear shirt. It's top gear shirt and jacket, like Clarkson or my Lord, I have no idea what a Top Gear shirt is. That's an incredible definition. Well, a pattern is. shirt. Yeah. Okay. What, like a hillbilly shirt? No. No, like a nice shirt, like a going out shirt. Um, Ludwig said, what, like a rhinestone cowboy? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Right, listen, I've got to go to bed. It's five o'clock in the morning now. And I was meant to do some work on my book today. I was meant to do a mail shot on Monday. I was so fucked after writing all weekend. I didn't get it done. I didn't get it done Tuesday. That's Wednesday not got it done. And now I've been up all night. I can't be doing any writing now. It'll give me a migraine. So it'll be bedtime. What a shame. It'll take me about an hour to go to bed. Floss my teeth. Clean my teeth. Have a wank. That's five minutes. And then... Uh, <laughs> No, I won't get to bed till six o'clock now. I know it. I just, oi, I listen to this, right? So, you know, I always wanted one of those nice round chopping balls. So, I got one of these the first time I come to Cambodia. It's just a slice of a tree, yeah? Yeah. But then when I got here, I realized that I could get a slightly bigger one, right? And you can see the, you know, you can see the rings of the tree in it, right? It's a bit dirty, but you can see that that's just a slice of tree. And my missus said to me the other day, she said, do you want a proper one like they use in the restaurants? And I was like, yeah, all right. So she brings it round and then she went, you've got to soak it in salt water for four days then you've got to boil up a load of oil. I said, what oil? She said, not like olive oil, nothing like that. She said, I'll get it for you from the market. You need to get it to about 200 degrees. After you've soaked it in salt water for four days, you have to pour, all the, pour the boiling water on it, and you always have to keep it wet as well. Now, I'm going to get it, but I'm going to have to keep it in the kitchen. Otherwise, there'll be water everywhere. You won't just see the size of this thing. It weighs about 20 kilos. I'm not sure if Sounds like a 20 it. kilo headache. <laughs> yeah, I thought the idea of a proper wooden chopping ball was the oils in it. Keep it clean. Yeah.
just shake in the water off it. So that's it. Oh, oh, so now you've got you've got a kitchen the size of a shopper and some three shopping boards. It's sitting in a bowl of like a massive bowl of uh, salted water. Oh, so it's sitting in a bowl of salted water. I had to put about six bags of salt in it. But apparently, once I've watered it and oiled it, it won't crack. And on the video, because I obviously looked it up online, the bloke does it. <laughs> he puts it in water for for about a week, pours this boiling water on it, and then he gets his, his cleaver, and it's quite amazing. He gets his cleaver, and he goes, and the cleaver goes about half inch into it, only about two inches at the end of the cleaver. You know, he doesn't get the whole cleaver in it, just two inches at the end. And he pulls it out, and it just goes... And it seals. There's you can't see anything. You can't see the cup. I'm gonna yeah. show you. I can I'm sensing either boredom, <laughs> absolutely no interest. It's a lot of effort or, were quite you could you could have summed up quite quickly, to be honest. No, I was I wasn't on board to start with, but you have got me up now with this, it seals itself. Oh, the thing is, Barkley, you're right, because there's a video here, old Chef Wang, and um, I'll show you just a little bit. He says it's not, they're not worth having in the, house, in, in the house. He said, because unless you're using them every day where they're kept wet and you, you, you know, you wipe them, he said they, they get mouldy if you let them dry, they crack. He said they're, they're for all day, every day use in, um, in a restaurant. But I'll show you a couple of bits of this and then I'll find the, the video with Mrs. the... Mrs. Munich is, wants to on. She just sent 10 quid requesting that. What's happening? Mrs. Mrs. Munich has sent 10 quid requesting for the link. What link? Stream yard, come on, come on. She's just been to a medium. This will be good, okay? All right, it is five o'clock in the morning, Mrs. Me, and I'll bring you on after the the um <laughs> chopping ball saga. So, here we go. Thank you for the donation, love. I'll talk to you in a minute. So, here, yeah, look, there's all the water. salt, there's the salt in the water. <laughs> Right, then he dries them and then he pours the boiling water on them. I'll show you the pouring of the boiling water. But this isn't the cup, but here's the boiling water. Ready? No, it's not boiling water, boiling oil. Look at the size of those ones, though. All the street stalls in Cambodia have them. You see them chopping on them all day long. And... There's, I saw one video. He says, you treat it correctly. Um, he says it's going to last you 20, 30 years. But I've just got to find the right video to see the the knife. To be honest, it's just impractical. I did work in um, it is uh, a but I, I did right. work in a butcher's for a little bit. And while I was there, like the for their cutting boards, they just have one very thick one that they shave off at the end of each day. So they, I know, they, they like yeah. circumcise it on a daily basis to give a, a new lease of life and clean it Here up. we go. Here's the cutting bit. This is the interesting bit. Here we go. So I'll just let it play. It's only about a minute. The next one's better than that, but that's pretty much gone. I think that's pretty good. That's a fair old cut. And you see, look. What? It's pretty that is pretty crazy. I'll yeah, give you that. a little bit of water and it's gone. It's like Wolverine. If it doesn't do that, that, you know, one day of use and it's gone. 
this music is what I hear when I uh, go into my imagination. I imagine my life if I was born in the 1700s as an aristocrat. This is what I hear. And I'm imagining right, myself get, at a ball. Let's get this loony on. Um, right, Mrs. Me in it. I'm going to put it in the chat. I can't stay for long, though, love. It's 5 a.m. And I've, will illuminate the I've world. not worked for three days because I'm too tired every day. So, you know, um, here you go. Yeah, Johnster. Yeah, that's him. He does loads of stuff about Chinese cooking. It's a, a Chef Wang, if you're interested. Johnston says he's definitely autistic. <laughs> um, Baz says that tropical wood is chopped for the rest for the world and for our biomass industry too. I don't know what that means. Moody Edge says fibres in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Moody's nailed it. There you go. Toffee says my cutting board is one of my post- most that'll be prized possessions. I've got a really snazzy one. Yeah, likewise, I have. It's just going to take a bit of maintenance, but I do cook either way. Glass says, nah, crumbs will find their way in. Crumbs? What do you think I'm cooking on it? Biscuits? Jesus. Steak and eggs every day. Uh, no, I was just say very exactly. I've got steak on it. It's a meat one. The others are my veg. Right, here we go. The pair of them. I wasn't warned about that. How do we get them to bigger? Not like that. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know how you can do that. Right. <laughs> Just <have a> problem. <laughs> right, I'm setting my alarm, um, Mrs. Uh, me in it, because I know what happens here. Look at me, Chris Deforestation Dangerfield. Oi, that one bit of log will last me the rest of my cooking life. Right. Better than a lump of plastic. What are you doing? Exactly. Yeah, Oh, yeah, I feel gross for coating on a plastic chopping board at times. I always try to prefer my wood ones. Even the wood ones are coated in some plastic bullshit anyway. You can't escape it. But uh, I'm just talking about that topic. One that one ain't, though, for sure. Yeah. But there's a, um, I don't know if they're still around, but there was a, like a, a nationalist shop that was selling cutting boards and like bespoke. Hang on a minute, Barkley. I don't mind. I want to listen to it. Mrs. Barkley is using your time up now. Carry on, Barkley, please. please. <laughs> oh, Barkley's lovely. Oh, no, I know. That's why I wanted to keep taking up your time. Come on, quick. Talk. Quick. Before she gets in. <laughs> Look at him stitching me right up. Mrs. Me in it and the other half. You've just been to see a medium. I haven't. I have. Now look at Mouse Cat just deny me. I have. I have. He's walked off, look. He's gone. This is me in show. Do you think mediums? Do you no, think yeah, they go on your Facebook before you go in and like try to scout things about you? Because that's what I would expect from him. I got a pint of cockles, didn't I? Did you get a pint of cockles? Yeah, I had a pint of cockles. Right, oh, that, that, that the book is, is, is running. Misses me in it. I wasn't joking. Look, there it is. Oh, oh, right. yeah. Tell him about it. Tell him about the. Well, I've. I've... Stop it. Please space do. dust, man. <laughs> Wait, wait, the problem with the space dust was the kids didn't realise to activate it, you've got to sort of give it some. For them, it's just a bag of sugar, and they're just like, <sighs> and I'm like, no, no, look. And my <laughs> mouth's going, Pew. for people who don't know, the lovely uh, Mrs. Me in it sent about five bags of space dust for the kids in the provinces, and she regularly treats them. And uh, a few, a few um, angel delights for me, which is just, just ch that just makes my week an angel delight. Oh, you've got no. a whole pack of that on the way. Oh, I, I, yeah, I, you know what? I, I've been trying to lose weight, but when they, when they come, I'll, I'll make two of them in one hit and do it in one sitting, and I, I'll just stick my head in the bowl like that, just violently head butt it, and then just, <laughs> pay some bird to lick it off with a. Uh, Extra lips. <laughs> right, um, I'm now go, taking up your time. time. Go. Go. I've been just been down to, uh, they had a, a, a psychic medium night down the pub. And I bought tickets for three of my friends. One couldn't turn up. Oh, my God. And I knew what it was all going to be about. And, do you know, everyone had uh, three children, an old geezer that was bald, that wore a flat cap and... And couldn't breathe when he died. And I'm just sitting there killing myself. 
And thank fuck they didn't come to me because I would just slaughter the geezer. But um, yeah, it, it was hilarious. <laughs> I was just sitting there going, actually, I need a wait and um, I'm a bit hungry. He was reading the room, basically. Yeah. He was reading the room, going, oh, there, is there an Alfred? Is there a Fred in? Like, do you know anyone called Sue? Am I getting a, a J? A, a J? And I'm just sitting there going, a, a Josh? <laughs> It's bullshit. But it was half a night reading. out. It was was I'm it entertaining? On. Was it entertaining? No, really. I was lucky I was no, by, no, by the no. bar, so I could go like that to get me beer. But um, but no, it was uh I, I just knew how it. we were playing it well, and it was it a bloke doing the the performance yeah it was a bloke doing the performance and it was leading questions and i could tell it and i thought yeah Why? did you get the feeling that people other people could see that it was bullshit or did you get the feeling they were going for it um there were some people that were going for it and crying and no um, really yeah and other people we just look at like the people know each other we're just going yeah, right, yeah. Right. Does it, does it, do you not feel a bit awkward when you know, I mean, you can never be 100%, but in this instance, you can. You know that it's all bullshit, and, but <laughs> you're talking to someone about their dead fucking mother or something, really, you know, that's not a place for a stage performer to go in my book. Oh, and no, yeah, it, it was just people looking for answers and some people were like crying going, yes, Uncle Cedric wore a flat cap and he was going bald and he couldn't breathe at the end. Yes, that's him. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, for fuck's sakes. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but I went down there to take my friends down there and support the local pub. But, I'm um, a little bit gutted because the way you sold it to us, I thought you went to see one on your Jack Jones. And oh, I've so been to a few of them that have been really, really good. Yeah. Um, have you? Yeah, they're very... I'll tell you a story. Saturday night, I wrote a name on the back of my hand and he was a friend of us. He was in his 90s, but he loved to pass. Us. He and, likes uh, to party. I like to party. Yeah, yeah. And his name was Lester. And I wrote his name on the back of the hand because he wouldn't get out of my mind. So I wrote it down and I thought, I've got to go around and see Lester, old geezer. And I got up early on a Sunday and that's unheard of for me. So I bought some fudge and I thought, I'm going to pay him a visit and see how he is. I phoned up uh, someone in the village and I went, oh, did you like the soup I made? And he went, oh, I've got to tell you, Les died early this morning. Dun, dun, dun. And I thought, what does Lester want to get in touch with me for, for Christ's sakes? But, yeah, he, he's brown bread. Um, but he got through to me. But when I watch this geezer tonight... Hang I on, hang on, that. hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So Love you that. honestly think that someone who died had communicated with you? Yeah, they do. No, they don't. Yeah, they do. You ask Mick. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. What? Don't get me involved. <laughs> <laughs> you, oh, this is me in it. Do you think that when people die, they sort of hang around and tell people their names? Uh, no, they just appear and do weird things. Do they? Do they? I, I think you're trying to make it too specific, Chris, but it's one of those things that people can always... Uh, you can say it was either interpretation because you had it in your head it happened and because you're thinking about it or you think about no, something. I'm just asking, or, you know, Mrs. Like me in it. I mean, where are they? Are they in heaven? I ain't got a clue where they are. They're just passing through time. And uh, I, I, <laughs> I just, I saw my dad die and I was in France and I got a message through my head and a dream and I didn't need. He died, and he came through to me, and I've had it for years. But isn't that just a dream, though? No, no, not it's, a, it's but, real. That dream you had wasn't a dream, no. But no, it's it's no why dream. was it a dream, though, Chris? And I ain't, I ain't taking a side here. But I'm just not going to make the was. argument against her. Because when, well, when we, when. When we dream, we process things that we've 
thought about throughout the day that tend to be unresolved because dreams are the unconscious trying to make its way into consciousness. But no, I, got, understand, I, I understand how I that works. Waking dreams. So why is, it, why is her unconscious telling her that her dad's dying? Because it's quite a traumatic experience. Did you know it was fun? It's some, yeah, as Mick said, it's something I can't prove, but I used to have, uh, especially when I was younger, waking dreams and it would flash across my eyes and but I would what, see an what, accident. Hang on, so what, you'd see you're you'd see something happen. No, before it happens. Before it happens, so you're like clairvoyant. That's what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, probably something like that. I mean, well, and, what, and this happens to you quite a lot, does it? Yeah. And every time you have seen a vision, it's happened in the real world. Yes. So, Mrs. Me in it, the lottery this Saturday. Have you seen um, any numbers? No, they won't give you the numbers, but I did. I get a black guy come to me that. Um, but he normally comes what that was you number, and he gives me numbers sometimes and um he gave me six sets of numbers i could only remember three of them um but i won on the national lottery and i put the other three uh three three numbers on a horse um, in the Grand National, and I won. <laughs> I mean, this is me, and it is why I've got a problem with it, because what you're suggesting is that the future is already um, sort of set. No, because no. because it, you wouldn't be able to see it if it isn't already planned out. No, it's, it's, in, it's intermingled. It's different dimensions that creep into our aisles but sometimes a lot of people are too busy can't see it and don't take any notice of it but uh, their dimension and our dimension is completely different they're 24 I, 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 hours whoa, whoa, whoa. Is who's now. their dimension though oh uh, the dead people <laughs> 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 no i i do think there is um some uh i, I think it could be legitimacy to what you're saying i, I don't speak up but i do i do Sometimes do little deep dives. I do look into occultism, not that I'm a Satanist or anything like that, but I, I find it interesting. Um, and, uh, you know, a uh, friend of mine, he's very into it. So we speak a lot about these ideas. Um, I, I've had it within my own family where my great grandma on my mother's side uh, was supposedly a psychic who could read for tea leaves. And she had some weird premonition about my mother's dad dying and things to that effect. Um, Chris is like, Slightly holding his mouth, covering his mouth, so you can't see what he's grinning. Um, <laughs> but, but it, I mean, as well, the same with my uh, my nanny on my dad's side. She's told some proper weird stories of dreams she's had that just predicted the future, just right as it was about to happen. I think she called it the orange dream. I've never, I've never, ever seen anyone pull this off when they're in a in a test environment. Never, and there's been plenty of them. And I've never had anyone tell me or I've never seen any evidence of someone telling me in advance and then it happening. It's always afterwards. I saw that before it happened. Well, there, there's one instant my mum took me to... No, uh... but I know you're going to tell me this, but I don't believe you. No, you, you can collaborate. That collaborate is collaborate. that what? Collaborate. You're going to collaborate. That's what you're saying. Collaborate. He did like, like. Um, magic, didn't he? So possibly he sing behind that sort oh, of. Oh, he's done magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's there's something more than what we know about, and we're not allowed to know about it. But we've seen. Um, my mum took after me dad died. She took me away to America, and we went to Las Vegas. And she said I was spending her money like water. And she went, look, there was an um, airplane over, uh, you could get hire this airplane and go across the Grand Canyon. And she said, I went absolutely mental at her. And I had never done that to my mum because she'd, she'd have me on the floor by my hair. And I just, we ain't doing it, we ain't doing it. And I'll, yeah, I'll but I know, I know how crazy. this story ends. Plane crashed. That was the plane in the Twin Towers. <laughs> but the thing is, 
there's you to put you know people do things like that and nothing happens but they they remember the ones where there was some kind of cohesion you know when i was a kid i didn't want to do things all the time because kids don't want to do things it's but happened then, all my life okay well i don't i've got i don't you you can see the future. That's all. All I can say to that oh, is. Yes, and now and then, it's just boring. Hang on, you just said it's happened all your life. Um, it in fleeting all moments. Life. In fleeting moments is what she's saying. It's not something that's like <laughs> every day. Like you know, I, I've had the like occasional <laughs> dream which has had some weird future premonition in it. it. Not not in a very in abstract ways, I guess. I would yeah, say. but we can, based on our intelligence and experience and knowledge and understanding of how people operate and how people, things and places operate, it's not that unusual to be able to predict certain outcomes. But well, I if, may, you may think I'm cryptic, Claire. Um, <laughs> which is unfortunately, <laughs> you've been quite clear this time. The one thing I'm not is a liar, and I'm quite factual and it does it does happen to me quite a lot things go missing in the house Nick seen things moving hang around on, as well. whoa, whoa, whoa. hang on what's things going missing in the house got to do with seeing the future though i don't see the link it's it's all the same thing something yeah. will go missing what and... dead people are stealing things yeah <laughs> fuck off you're yeah. good <laughs> yeah, they, think it, they think it's fucking funny. <laughs> Ooh, do you know how many people have died since the world began? Well, I know how many people have died in my house. <laughs> that was what I asked you, though. <laughs> I mean, if these people were around, you'd need like about. I mean, you're, you're looking at billions of billions of dead people. And oh, for there is a counter argument your about that is that you can usually only have some sort of a, a you have to have some sort of link with someone, or there has to be some like like say, like say someone dying in the house or something like that. That would leave their presence there. It's uh, it's usually something vague. It's kind of interpretable. Well, what, 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 what is their presence? Uh, their pre well, yeah, I, well, it's it's hard to define. It's not something scientific at all. Um, well, you used the word, so you must know what it means. Well, because I know you just laugh what I said, but it's like yeah, a, a spiritual presence, something that ties them there, <laughs> something that. See, there, there you go. I mean, I, I'm just saying it how um, I would explain it, but yeah, so, some level of spiritual presence or so, some sort of psychic link. It's like a lot of cultism. If you want to start messing with someone, uh, do dream invasions and stuff like that, which if you're about to say it's not real, you know, the CIA think it is, so they, they probably know more than we do. Oh, I'll trust um, the CIA all day long. Yeah, they're with, the with their fucked up leaked experiments. Yeah. Um, to 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 give LSD to soldiers. I mean, who gives a fuck Based what they think? There's, I've, you know, it, it, I've it, I, there has never, there is never been a single test where anyone has managed to prove this. It's always happened before, and they, you know, there's ne If this could happen, you could prove it. You could I think say, it right. comes in fleeting moments for people. I don't oh, know yeah, but if you if you could actually see the future, and you said to someone, "Leave me in a put me in a house, and for a year, and I'll pay for it, and when I predict the future, you pay me back ten times over, because in one year something will happen. If you had that much faith that it happened, you'd do that." But people don't because they know that it's not doesn't happen. It also seems people, like an impractical test. People basically. like the the idea of it, and you know we're very good at sort of tricking ourselves. You know, it's not that difficult to predict certain outcomes in life because you know humans can be quite predictable. When there's that party and you're like, I don't really, I don't know about this one tonight because so and so is going to be there, Fingy Bob will be there, they'll get drunk, this will happen. It doesn't exactly happen like that, but it pans out a bit like that. And then Chinese whispers, the, you know, the movement of time. And 10 years later, 10 years ago, we were going to go to this party. And I said, I don't want to go to that party because John will get a knife and he'll stab Joanne. And that's exactly what happened. You're being far too predictable. Um, yeah, but you're, you're, you'll talk about predictive things like, you know, like you're playing a game of chess. This is like an involuntary 
just happened to like something just appeared to me at one point and that's exactly what happened you're all mental listen <laughs> it's and you're not you're, 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 I, th I think I think you're actually just closing yourself off to the, uh, the intellectual discussion. You're being anti-intellectual right now. No, I just want some yeah. proof and evidence that has never happened. If you're asking me to take your word for it, I can't do it. I'm afraid it's just it. I can't live the rest of my life based on people telling me things that don't correlate with my experience of the world. You know, that's like me saying so to you. So, someone like me, are you actually calling me a liar? Because I don't. No, know. no. No, but I think you've it's allowed really yourself a certain amount of deception, self-deception, because humans do self-deceive. I do it. Everyone in this chat does it. You're allowing yourself that because it provides something that you feel you need. You don't know how wrong you are. No, I know. Well, okay. I, you know, I, I see this from oh. a, a different angle. Than I've got to go to bed. Me it. oh, I've, I've, it's been I've, an absolute pleasure. Ta -da. Mrs. Me and it. Love you to death, darling. But if you do see anything bad happen to me, Quickly, you got my number. Let me know. Eh? <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> God, fucking hell. I've just a packer. What a night it's been. What'd you make of tonight's show then? That was brilliant. That was really good. I, I feel a bit for Pizzle because he's obviously having a bit of a hard time. Is he's he? not in a great place. Well, because he started <laughs> using and he's sitting there saying, yeah, but I can stop any time I want. So the, the next question is, well, fucking stop then. That's but what... he's all right. he says he's on. His, his life's getting better when he's on the up, so that's good. Barkley's always good fun. And um, Mrs. Me and it is just incredible. They're all, they're all OG scrubs, a lot of them. Lovely people. I, I, I refuse to argue with shit like that that she was coming out with just because it's like you can't you can't argue with it is not to because otherwise it's a boring, <laughs> boring streams and everyone's like yeah I, no I, I find I find people like that really interesting I'll sit and listen to flat earthers and space deniers and all that sort of thing I'll sit and listen to them all day long I all find right. it fascinating all right. I'll do a bet with you you sit and listen to Mrs. Me in it for three hours <laughs> you ask Mousecat first. Mousecat and sit in their house with them for three hours. I'd have a fucking I'll lovely tell you what, night, a night out with that lot. A night in yeah. their booze in their garden would be fucking great. One day in the future, we'll have to organize the big old scrubs knees up. I reckon it'll be one of the best nights we've all ever had. Imagine everyone meeting up and like putting names to faces and all that. It'd be amazing. <laughs> I'll come in disguise. I can't handle it. I can't handle all that pressure. Everyone knows too much about me. Right. I'm going to show you all a real, a real psychic. We might get yeeted. If we do get yeeted, that's the end of the stream. But there is one psychic that I do trust and believe in. And I'm going to play it as the outro. So, um, for some reason, I can't see Super Chat. So, if you've sent any, hang on, I've just found them again. No, no, let me check Entropy. Blogs has dropped another one. Have you seen Moody Edge's Conehead Alien Nine Heads and Trannies? How does he find them? I haven't seen Moody Edge's Conehead Alien Nine Heads and Trannies. Um, and Blogs has sent a link. Let me have a look what the link is. Bill, it's R five now. It's a it's a copper talking about his boots. Um, Bill, remind me on the next stream and I'll play it. I've I've got to get some sleep, mate. I've got to work tomorrow and I haven't been doing any work. I can't see anything, Packer. I can't even see you. I can see you down there, but not on the screen. I'm here. Oh, I've got oh, you back now. Right. So, people, thanks to everyone who donated. Thanks to Barclay and Pizzle and Mrs. Me in it and Mouse Cat for coming on. Massive thanks to Packer, best co-host in the world. And most of all, thanks to all of you lot. We've still got 90 people. Now, they won't be the 90 that we had three and a half hours of fucking well, He's go. good after three and a half hours, though. Fucking hell. Yeah, yeah. It, um, I When I have a look at this afterwards, we've probably had about 500 people come and go. That's that. That's what that tells me, which is nice, you know. I, I, 
it's a long time to sit and watch fuck knows we've talked about all sorts tonight haven't we <laughs> but check out this psychic oh, we've had him on the channel before um my, one of my favorite comedians it's an oldie but goodie um check out just don't blink because there's a couple of absolute brutal moments um people you can still throw money at me packer thanks a lot mate i'll let you go now and uh thanks for having us watch this oh it's a pleasure it's a pri my privilege uh i will remove you now i'm gonna do it like hello. this but... hello scrubs there you go nudged him away see you later barkley i can see you there i'll kick him from the studio uh i'll leave uh packer there so he can watch it on here right uh thank you all people it really is a privilege to be able to stream and get an audience and and sometimes i do play devil's advocate because um it's more interesting surely I can't just sit here agree and i watch streams where everyone agrees and i'm like oh okay everyone seems to agree and i don't believe they do all agree I've got to speak my lived experience. <laughs> Check this out. It is the incredible Mark Wooten playing Shirley Ghostman, and it's fucking gold dust. Um, I hope that you get the audio. Let me know. Hang on. I'll just get rid of the ad. Right, it's three and a half minutes, so I might get yeeted, but we'll play as much of it as we can. Here we go. Ta-da, people. I'm, I'll probably say something when it's finished. Let me get my head off the screen. Check this out. It will absolutely crack you up. Here we go. Oh, man. Mediums use a technique called trans-channeling, allowing them to put their body under the influence of a spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like Shushi, as I am about to channel spirit. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Lady Di. Amazing, tremendous, magnificent Lady Di. What died? I'm coming to you from the Neverworld, what I rule with my dear husband, Dodi Fayed. Hello. I've been summoned here by the great Shirley Ghostman for a new exclusive telly show, what he was telling me about in the bath. I've been desperate to come through to thank you all for the lovely funeral what you've done on me. Although I must say, the journey to Westminster Abbey was a little bit slow. I felt like telling the coachman to put a move on, but then I realized that's how I got into this bloody mess to begin with. When Charlie bent over the coffin to pay his last respects, I could smell the ripe stench of Camilla's undercarriage on his breath. Cheeky bloody Charlie, you've got to love him. Can't keep it in his flipping trousers. He must feel like he's in a blooming Godfather movie, waking up every morning with a horse's head on the pillow next to him. Maha! <laughs> Before I go, it's payback time for Queenie, what stitched me up. I've got a few secrets about that wrinkly monkey that haven't been flogged by Paul Burrell yet. I accidentally barged in on her in the bathroom one day and caught her in the act, sucking her own tits. One of them was a lot longer than the other one. It sat draped across her chest like a deflated balloon. Nay, matter, 
She'll get what's coming to her for doing what she done to me. One last thing before I fade. Remember, despite what the press say, Shirley is not a gay lord, just a tad camp. Keep believing, and maybe one day I'll be back. Goodbye. 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 Mm, 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 mm. I can't believe we got away with it. Whoa, I don't know what's playing now. Oh, we can actually have some music. Um, Barkley says he's got one more thing. Go on, Barkley. Thanks for the super chat, Barkley. Nice one, Alan. I can't believe you. Alan, you've done the full three and a half hours, son. Amazing. Yeah, sorry. So on the uh, just on the topic of sidekicks, before we actually start the stream, I'm not bullshitting. Right? I was writing this out um, before I came on. I'd actually written a bingo list of things that were going to happen when I came on. So for the free space, we've got Hair Joke. And uh, I'm not going to say all of them because I don't want to give the game away. But I did get one right. bingo straight in a row. Straight in a row. And uh, we never right. spoke about Yes. Um the only thing I was going to say about Yes is that I was coming up with a song and I accidentally kept playing some of the notes from Roundabout, which I'm sure you love. Favourite song, isn't it, Chris? Well, I don't even know what you're talking about. Well, yeah, it's, it's almost like if you didn't just kick you off about giving me a chance to speak now, maybe it would have flowed a bit better. Yeah. All right. Maybe next. Right, people. Oh, there we go. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure, people. I've really got to get some sleep. Uh, bless you all. Look after yourselves, and I'll see you when I uh, next can stream. Thank you all. Take care. Lots of love. And, uh, oh, I nearly ended it about playing the music. That ain't how it works, is it? Here we go. Bit of Baldy G, a bit of Cold Hard Steel. I don't know if Anglo's here, but always reminds me of him. Well, because he likes it, I suppose. See you later.
wow, wow. Uh, just some credit to blogs there. He sent, he did send a couple of other entropies. I read the one about moody edges, alien cone heads. I, I don't know what it means. And uh, well, the other one was a link with a copper. Remind me next time, Bill, and I'll play that video. But it's now nearly six in the morning. Fuck me. Uh, look after yourselves, people. Ta ta. Hoi.